It's the landscaping show that frightens people. Yeah, I've been scared of the snow ever since we started. The stakes are high. This has to be done by next summer or my family is going to kill me. It's full of drama. So we're all out of concrete. Oh, that's the drama. There's even a water feature. To see it finished looks absolutely amazing. This is a beautiful job. spoiled suburbs they need landscaping <laughs> they need landscaping the crew must dig deep who's got two thumbs and likes digging in clay this guy to help create an outdoor love nest for tanya watch the mother's gonna come and whack us in the head in a minute for dirty business see what one good whack will do feeling a bit hammered needing a little quiet time Bam! if you're feeling a bit run over no end in sight stick around this spa's got it just right. It's the landscaping show with balls. Oh, that just caught my eye. We're not afraid to deal with heavy topics. Just an older machine and uh, there's too much weight on the skid. We've got great costumes. Ow. Snappy dialogue. Oh. And a man on a bike. So I'm on my way to the Bowers residence. This house is not right. Oddball, oddball, oddball. The side is to the front and the front is out of sight. How does anything get delivered or anything? No one can find the entrance. Kennedy can't turn the house around, but he can lead visitors where they need to go. This man is traveling to another dimension. Okay, I think I should take my safety shield off better. A dimension of sound. Jay, get another call. Communicate this way, okay? It's Friday, I can't hear you anymore. A dimension of sight. Jay, have you seen this from up here? Yeah, it's very cool. A dimension of landscaping. To see it finished looks absolutely amazing. Awesome. Wow. In the business of dirty, the hazards of the job can be dire. Did my pants just slip? Lauren ripped his crotch. <laughs> Many brave men have fallen. Oh, feel like an old timer. And the fallout hasn't been pretty. Oh, broke the pot. As still we soldier forth to backyard victory. Wow, wow I love it. This is dynamite. Oh, oh, oh. This is excellent. Our story begins in a beautiful place. Looks like a great neighborhood that's conducive to kids. With a not so beautiful backyard. We have a family of four, Brennan and I, and then we have two little kids running around all the time. So it's a reasonably busy household. The way I'd sort of describe the property right now is it's a little bit grungy and urban. Having you know a cinder block wall and, and an alleyway behind us is something that I'm not as happy to see. I come from BC, so I'd like to actually see BC transported and dropped into my backyard. Doesn't look like it would fit. When Heidi is talking about transplanting BC, she's thinking of sort of wildlife setting with ocean and orcas and all sorts of wooden structures and stuff. Oceans and orcas? We can try, but that's a lot of water. I'm Joel, and I'm here to fish for more details. Looks like we're talking about an overhaul for the backyard. I think so. It's okay, but yeah. I'd rather have something a little more spectacular than just okay. The whole property slopes down. We've already actually had one child topple over when she was uh, running down. Looks like a bit of a toboggan run. Um, <laughs> the shed can go. Yeah. I can see you looking over at the shed. It's ugly and I'd love to see it go. Yeah. I guess one big issue we should talk about is the deck. Did you want to see that removed? I'd like a deck, not yeah. necessarily this particular deck. They're the ones saying it. Fencing, did you? <laughs> this is a little bit of a problem. <laughs> I'd like more privacy generally. And at night, there, you can see that light in the middle of the house back there. <laughs> the high beam? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's some sort of light that they would put on a helicopter to search for people, because you, I'm pretty sure we can tan it by that at nighttime. How about a water feature or a... I would love to get a water feature. Oh, yeah? OK. Yeah. Great. If bring you can bring here. the ocean here yeah. and bring BC into my backyard, I'll be really happy. <laughs> And to pull together an adult and kid-friendly yard, we've brought in a ringer. Emma has uh, decided to play hooky for the afternoon, spend it with our design team. So, Heidi so, yeah. and Brendan, 
They have this existing deck. It was designed by somebody else who I don't think got it. I say tear it out. Is it screwed nails. down? This looks brand new, this deck. It's That's mm -hmm. the hard part about ripping it out. It's not right. It's not it's uh, what we would have originally yeah. designed. Why do they want to change the double? This slope, Kennedy, it's yeah, like, your kids are going to be playing and do one of those where you just yeah, right. roll over. So I'll have to work with that. Anything, Emma? Emma, would you play in this backyard? No. <laughs> no? no? The answer. We're going to fix it up so you learn it. kid. What's a nice big house, Joel? What can we do to help this yard kick back? Now, we're going to gain quite a bit of space by removing this uh, shed. Keeping in mind this. It's amazing. I mean, who has a five foot wide tree that looks like it's from a rainforest in their backyard? Nice ash. Well, the most challenging thing about this site is the great issue, because it's not flat. Have they talked about a water feature? They want a water feature, don't yeah, they? Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Absolutely. I think we should start measuring. Now, measuring is very tricky. Lots of numbers. One foot nine. More than a few signals. <laughs> I laughed. That's so high school. Like art class. Or music. I met Bye -bye. her in some foreign queen in Memphis. That's pretty good. Even your first <laughs> crush. <laughs> uh, he's not ticklish today. With a recess that never ends. This is an existing deck, so we're not designing this, but we're just going to refurbish it. But this is the new deck down below, and with the staircase, and this is the water feature here. There's quite a large wall here with, covered with lattice, which is a little bit unsightly. It's starting to collapse, so that wall has to be redone. Hopefully it won't mess with our timing. A lot of work, but could look great. Time to talk about solutions. We've decided that it would be best to leave your deck and look at recovering it, putting a brand new cedar over top of it. It's a beautiful wood, nice and warm. And then incorporate an upper level, a mid-level, and a lower level. The privacy issue is going to be covered with plant material on the lower level, and then tempered glass screens. I like that. Yeah. I this like is, the glass. Yeah, I think this yeah. is just a little more uh, snazzy and uh, just brings it up a little bit more. And what's the, <laughs> sorry, the water feature, what's that gonna be? Lauren came up with it and it's just built into the deck and it also ties in to the lower deck. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a really lovely project. How long do you think it's gonna take? That's, that's the million dollar question. Hopefully this one will be smooth, fast, and beautiful at the end. Smooth, fast, and beautiful. It's music to the ear. In practice, not so much. A piece of two by eight on top of rotting wood. Holy shit, it's wood underneath! I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna save this. Joel's more academic than I would have thought you'd see in the landscaping business. Yes, academic. Can you guys touch your tongue to your nose? I was expecting someone more to be able to, you know, cart wheelbarrows and stuff around, but I get the impression Joel doesn't really do that. You can go for your mother now. I can do some measuring down here. We'll see when they're actually on site whether he gets his hands dirty or whether he uh, just draws the pretty pictures. Day one, the day we get to rip it all apart. Being paid to smash things may sound like fun until you have to put it all back together. The crew is fast at work and the walls are tumbling down. No flies on us. Yeah. Joel's pet fly. That's, that's a good <laughs> fly. <laughs> the shed left behind a massive concrete footprint. All eyes to the deck. Fingers crossed we can retrofit and not build new. It looks like it's still in good shape, and so maybe there's something to work with the bones with of it. Or maybe not. I don't think I want to walk on this anymore. Holy shit, it's wood underneath! Uh, oh, wood really moving in dirt. It's not even sitting on concrete or anything. There's nothing under it. Guess what? Here. We found rot. How do we make out with the, uh... <laughs> oh, no. There's never a pleasant way to break bad news like this. We found a couple of things. Oh, lovely. It means the deck may have to come off. It's not a good thing. This site's a perfect example of something every homeowner should be aware of. Did I mention that the homeowners were both uh, in Lawyers. The, the profession yes. of, of law? Yes, yes. So... Better dot the T's and cross the I's. One of the first issues we had, your deck was being <laughs> held up by a piece of two by eight. Oh, wood to swell, that's not supposed to be good, is it? <laughs> no, it's not great. And then they did it again over here. Oh, good. So this entire run had 
a post on each corner, and that was it. So you either have to fix this, right? Choose people I don't like to sit here. You do. <laughs> no, or there, either oh. one. It's such a bummer. And it makes it all the more important to assure other plans, like the glass partitions, go without a hitch. Can we get me in the back smashing glass? For some guys, it's strip clubs or sexy magazines. For a landscape designer, it's something a bit more nerdy. I'm gonna put my butt cheeks against the glass. <clears throat> Kicked out of another glass shop. My main goal, to find something for Heidi and Brendan that will give them privacy. Cool. And be safe for the kids. Okay, Joel, over here we have the sandblasted glass. Still have a lot of privacy. I love it, and I love the fact that it has a nice sort of soft blue kind of yes. hue to it. It looks really good. Yep. And I have heard they use this stuff in hockey rinks, and that's actually what we tell clients. They so, do. Yeah. Uh, safety. You know, when a normal piece of glass breaks, it breaks into a big shard or big spider webs all over it. Tempered glass does not do that. It'll break into small pieces okay. so that it just falls. Excellent. Falls away. I'm really fond of this bluish hue. I think it's great. And I think it really sets off plant material and the uplighting behind it and everything. I think we're in good shape with that. So we should order some glass. What do you know? I'm all fired up and ready to go. You want to go for a drink? <laughs> yeah. Well, back at the site, they're the ones who could use a beer or six. What are you guys going to do on this wall then? The neighbor's leaning retaining wall is threatening to topple right onto our design. They're putting two U channels and anchoring it back. Luckily, they're taking preventative action. They're doing probably what most homeowners would do. Which is great for us, and their plans are not going to impact on our project timeline at all. It's going to work. So they're going to put two steel columns down? And the best part is, it's not going to cost us any money. OK, go back in your job. But our problems aren't solved just yet. One of the things I want to talk to you about was how we were stepping the screens down. Our new deck setup requires a second look we might not have enough glass panels. Glass is custom. So again, anytime you go custom, you kind of pay for it. Yeah, framing and the glass. Yeah. Can you get me a number on what it would take to do two screens there? Yep. This could cost an arm and a leg. It's not bad news. It's just uh, it's what we call on-site decisions. Which could mean some off-site funding. More money, more money, more money. More money, more money, more money. More money. More problems. You know what? I can't wait till you get my bill. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. The neighbor's retaining wall is getting an overhaul, which helps them and us, even if it's not the prettiest to look at. By the time plant material goes in and everything else is going on, it's going to be significantly toned down. So it's great. With that in mind, I've emptied pretty much the entire office to go on a hunt for plants for this new backyard. Luckily, We've got the club car. Have you seen my ball? Listen, it was a, uh, a, one, a number four. We're professionals at every turn. She loves me. She loves me not. First on the hit list, one of the most popular of trees. I think generally all around, we all like to go after service berry because they have something for every season. White flowered spring, yeah. beautiful berry in the summer, and looks great bark in the winter. Time. And yeah. it's yeah. really, really hardy in this song. Where do you turn for privacy in a shady setting? The hornbeam. Did you know that they used to make chariots in Rome from these? The hardest hardwood there is. They also call it ironwood. You got it. Iron horn. And look at the height. I mean, instantly you're getting 12 mm. feet high. And this isn't even big ones. I mean, well, I think this is a perfect plant for Heidi and Brennan. Yeah. But uh, this is more of a structural wall, I would say, as opposed to that focal that we're still after. Focal. Focal. I need a focal. There's the one we're looking for. Ah, yeah, yeah. Crab apple trees get us a bit closer. This is definitely the shape and size and structure we're after. And we're looking for privacy behind the tempered glass screens. This might work very well. Great screen, columnar, we'll go it's with excellent it. Excellent choice. Yeah. Beautiful, let's rock. But for the ultimate in privacy, it's definitely dogwood. Okay, this is a focal. That is a focal. This, this is a focal. If there's this anything is that's a focal, a focal, this is a focal. We gotta tag this one. There's two spots that we really need the focals, and that says you're entering, and as well to complement the water feature. I think we'll just tag this tag one, her. and uh, we're tag looking her. good. I think we're on our way. Tag her. So the plants are picked. And even better, one of my favorite features, the tempered glass panels are going in. Makes me feel so good. The glass is a key feature. And thankfully, we didn't have to add any more to the original order. That'll make the clients almost as happy as the panels will. Something very cool happened. When you walk up from the driveway 
to see the screen on one side and the other gives a really neat visual cool. feel. I'm looking forward to the reveal on that one too because it has gone through an incredible before and after. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. And the hits just keep on coming. Plants have arrived and they're going in. Those are really beautiful service berries, that's good. Beach, why did I order beach? They say landscape design is dealing with the fourth dimension. You're dealing with designing with living plant material, like something living. It's really, and I think that's why we all do it, because we love it. False spirea, this is a beautiful shrub, very hardy, beautiful white flower, and great for shade. Eight out of 10 gardens we deal with are shade, so we're always looking for shade plants. And we've gotten very creative at finding hardy shade plants that work really well and have amazing winter interest. That's a big deal. Looks like every plant in the world is here, including some really skinny ones. The hornbeams, I just wish they were a little bushier. That's all. I asked for the biggest ones I could get, and these are them. So we'll have to find out if Heidi and Brendan are okay with that and the weight, because I know this is an issue. So we'll see. As if that weren't enough, I may have made a huge miscalculation. Usually there's little uh, mess ups with costing and things that happen and that's fine. Give a little bit here, a little bit there. I have to fess up. What should have been an $18,000 planting plan was sold as a $9,000 planting plan. But I'll tell you, the bottom line is, I didn't catch it. Oh. I should have caught it. But I would like to say, Heidi and Brendan, if you're watching the show, <laughs> it was a great deal on the planting plan. Yep, we're nothing if not gracious and giving. Yeah, here we are. And our designer, Lisa's here to help give this yard even more bling. So I think the clients after something that's like organic, but then they have a beautiful, well done home that's nice and clean lined. So you know, that sort of traditional contemporary look that's morphed together, I think that's what's going on here. Do they get shade from these trees? It's an interesting kind of shade. It's not what we would call full shade because it's a higher tree canopy, but it's sort of half sun, half shade. I think what I might do is just to give them the option just to have a nice big umbrella there. Uh, yeah, an umbrella might be a great idea. Yeah, bring it down. Yeah. This space. I would love to furnish this space. Okay, great. I think it lends itself to just having kind of a retreat from, so if that's dining area, have some nice cushioned seating down here. Cool. One thing that should be mentioned is they have two kids, okay. a one-year-old and a three-year-old. One and three. Yeah. Okay. I'll we'll just put a seat belt on the chairs. Yeah, or we'll just do some nice cushions on the backside on the ground and the dirt there. So if they fall down, it's okay. <laughs> Boom. Just kidding. And with that, Lisa springs into action. The dining area needs something to make it more intimate and feel like a room. So having an umbrella creates a nice little area. I like it. We're getting it. <laughs> with the end in sight, wouldn't you know it, a hitch. I would look at this project to be about a three to four week project. The water feature isn't anywhere near being done. And it's the rainiest summer in decades. We'll never get it done this way. I'm pretty sure we're jinxed on that front. <laughs> if it doesn't rain when I'm building the waterfall, I'll be amazed. And amazingly enough, we finally catch a break from Mother Nature. She was really bugging me. Now we're able to finish that water feature. It's the last piece of the puzzle for this design. For me, we've given this yard the perfect spin and just the right amount of punch. Wow, awesome. I don't know how to describe what it was before. I mean, it was in need of repair. Now, it's just so beautifully calm and clean line and simple. Wow, oh, so cool. I love it. This is dynamite. Oh, this is excellent. It looks amazing. I'm really happy with the way it came out. Heidi and Brendan wanted a nice, clean line, calm feeling, something that reminded Heidi of the West Coast. And it's happened here. People can't help but be involved and interact with this garden. 
awesome. This is a big deal. Yeah, it, I love to that. To see the site beforehand, right here, it was a pretty much a drop four off. foot drop. Right. And it dropped down with these really awkward steps, and it felt really unsafe for children. The stairs here are, are a lot safer because they've got railings on them, and you know, our 18 month old can walk up and down them, whereas he'd go splat on the stone <laughs> stairs before. We pretty much kept the original footprint for the deck, but the big thing was to plug in the water feature and the plants. That's what really drove the deck home. That's what made the deck okay. The water feature I really like, it makes a little bit of sound and it's so peaceful to sit out there and have a drink once the kids are in bed and we can actually relax a little bit. Construction wise, a wood water feature goes against the grain a little, Sorry. but I think we pulled it off. You know, we wanted to have that Japanese tub feeling. You know what, this. that is great. the level of noise you need. It's perfect. For water really features. beautiful. Perfect. This Hold just on. turned out amazing. Oh, love it, man. Well, the water feature is a focal point right in the middle of the garden, yeah. so you see it from the inside. Exactly. When you're Wraps. here in the lounge, you can look yeah. at it. And? Wow, where did the, the apartments uh, go? Exactly. That was one of the issues on the site. The oh, client wanted are. to have some privacy to the apartments, and so the privacy screens. Yeah. And what's really cool, too, is the wall that was there before, you don't even notice it, with, with the painted out, that dark black. I'm getting tired of saying dark black stain, black. but it works every time. It looks great. Yeah. The challenging part of this site when we originally saw it was the slope. It sloped down into this little pit down here with the crappy old shed. Very, very and now it feels like it's wow. a nice uh, level garden and they can use all of it for entertaining. It, uh, it all works. Not one person hasn't been happy with this project, so... Except Heidi and Brendan, I don't know, I hope they're happy. I got the West Coast feeling that I was hoping to get. Nice and relaxed. Love it. And you know what? Everybody else loves it too. This is my guy, he's Duncan. He's uh, five months old now, actually. So he's running around with me every Friday, going to job sites if, if I need to come out. Don't let anybody tell you kids are tough. Kids are easy to please. Clients, on the other hand, well, let me tell you a story. This particular client has just been through a major reno. We just thought that we would like to finish off our backyard sort of consistent with how the house was finished out and to get a little bit more use out of the backyard than we did in the past. Roman's wife, Elaine, is a bit camera shy. She's still there. But she'll be very involved in this job. Right now what's not working in the backyard is there's not enough room to entertain. The plants have kind of just overgrown, not really been taken care of. And now because they did the reno, the grade on the house, and I don't know if it's always been this high, but to us it's too high off the ground, so we need a flow through because their kitchen's gonna flow nicely down into this backyard. Right now it's just a drop off. We're hoping for the backyard to have sort of a courtyard effect to it. One thing is color. No blacks or any of the gray, all that root. They want the beiges, the, like the interior. We're also looking for a space where it's soothing, relaxing, uh, maybe a water feature there to kind of calm us down at the end of the day. This is the list you got from Alina? Yep. This is Lauren, our senior designer. He's going to help this backyard turn over a new leaf. Now there's one here that says modern. Modern. I tend to like more the modern. He is kind of a little more modern, like what he was saying, but I think she might. Can I put a question mark there? My wife, Elaine, has a lot of input. Uh, she's a little bit more traditional. I think she might get what she wants more. I'm not sure. Okay, so she wears the pants in the family. My wife, Elaine, makes the decisions in this household, but I'd like to believe that I have uh, some veto power. Everything seems to be pretty yeah. controlled. Right, controlled. Unlike my business partner, James. What they, the hell uh, are you doing? <laughs> Did he hang a moon? James definitely doesn't wear the pants in this office. How oh, hetero. So here's the deal. Roman wants us to come up with something that's tranquil, but not fussy. They're asking for low maintenance. And the lowest maintenance would be, as the joke goes, concrete the whole thing. So a lot of it is patio. We're going to use large steps coming out of the kitchen and into the backyard to avoid that drop-off feeling. The top step's going to be big enough for a bistro table and chairs to give the clients a little coffee area just outside the kitchen. We'll put an arbor area on this side of the yard to create a large entertainment space. Uh, Roman and Elaine would like a water feature, so we'll put that over here. The highest maintenance is water features. And this client wants one, contradictory to the low maintenance request, but 
it's just an element that in the garden it's hard to replace with something else. The water feature really adds to the tranquility. We're also going to do plantings around the perimeter. It's a shade garden, so we're going to have to come up with plants that don't need a lot of sun. We're going to move the shed to the back of the yard because basically sheds are ugly and we want to get it out of the way. We're also going to build a decorative screen to put in front of the shed and eventually vines will grow on it and the shed will be completely hidden from view. I wish my own backyard could even approach what this is going to look like. Well, everybody's asked me, what's this cage for? <laughs> and you know, it's not for anything. It's just to divide the whole garden up and create more kind of room feeling to it. It's kind of how I design. I design in your face kind of feeling. I always tell people, we don't sit you right near the house because you got to be out in the garden to feel like it's a garden. Eventually when plants are all grown up here, they'll just kind of envelop you, this whole sitting area down here. It's amazing when you're designing for yourself and there's no rules, it's impossible. This has taken forever. This has to be done by next summer or my family's gonna kill me. Who's this, Lado? This yeah. is, uh, what's the client thinking for a color schematic? Well, if they're really not telling us anything right now, we're just going with, I think, a little more yellows, just because it's kind of shady and, you know, just to brighten it up a little bit. They seem to have a uh, fair landing up here. Did they want to do anything with it, or what, what's happening here? I think they want a bistro table and yeah. barbecue. Just not to have to go down to the major right. table Everything all the time. It's a main for coffee. Your morning coffee. It's nice to just nip out here. And this is really, really secluded kind of in the yard. I like it. It's very cool. It looks like it has nice solid bones with the uh, existing mature plant material. Yeah. And it's ready to go. Meanwhile, back at the job site, everything, the grass, the bushes, the deck, everything has been torn out. While there's no turning back, our camera shy contractor, Elaine, has not been seen, but she has definitely been heard. I just got a call from Elaine. She thinks the steps from the kitchen down to the patio are a bit too big. I don't want to make these steps too small, because if it's too small, they'll just feel like they just drop off. So I have Ron, our general contractor, down there now trying to sort all this out. They really wanted to see the size of the steps in proportion to the house. A lot of people can't relate off plan. So Ron is kind of staging it, just to show Elaine what the sizes will be. So it's one step, back to here, one more step, and another step. I'm pretty sure the steps are the right size, but if we have to give the client some time to mull it over, so be it. This is kind of on hold, I guess, for now. So we're on hold until our clients can decide when this project can take its next step. Well, we're hoping for the backyard to put sort of a courtyard effect to it. Screens, shade-friendly plantings, and an arbor will make it a great place to chill out. As for a water feature, the highest maintenance is water features. And this client wants one, contradictory to the low maintenance request. But in the end, change is gonna be unbelievable. The clients wanted to see a rough-in patio, which is putting us into a bit of a delay. I travel a fair bit, and so it's really kind of hard to get together with people to finalize decisions. Happily, it's been approved and we're moving forward. The patio is going to be a random square cut, which means all the flagstone is going to be cut into different sized squares and rectangles and then fitted together. It gives the garden a bit of a formal look. The patio here comes right up to and becomes the edge of the water feature around here. But the back stands up about this high. This is kind of emulating the size of water feature. Whatever I order goes in the wall that they build here. It spills out like this, width spills out into the pool. Whenever you do like a sheet of water pouring, it breaks the surface of the water. So you don't continually get like the back is like spitting out the water like that, where it's like, you know, it's kind of an annoying sound. This is more like sheet rain, like that It's one thing to sound like a fountain. It's another to find the right fountain. Some people misunderstand, and it doesn't just, it doesn't go out like this. Right. It actually just will come out like maybe like that. This is stainless. Stainless steel. Awesome. Won't rust. So you're just going to attach your tubing here. Yep. To whatever pump. Do you have the pump or you need to choose a pump too? We need the pump and piping. We'll get it all from you guys. Okay. Which and this is all winter, so yeah. It, yep, it's guaranteed for winterizing, which means that if it freezes, it's gonna be fine. Wow, I'm pumped about this water feature. 
back at the job site, the stairs are going in. The steps off the kitchen are laid in mortar on top of a concrete form. The new shed will also be built on a concrete pad. This morning we got concrete delivered, but uh, the concrete company did a miscalculation and uh, you can see we're a little bit short. So we're all out of concrete. Hold on, I gotta go punch out the concrete guy. Would have been nice to get it all poured as one pour, uh, but we'll just, we'll have to add on to it. But the backyard isn't all hardscape. It'd be nice to put some yellow plants in this garden, Kennedy. I was, well, my only concern is the sun. Is, yeah. Is there, are there some sunny spots? This is kind of the sunnier kind of area right in here. Okay. But there's some yellows too that can handle shade, so. So it'd be nice you know, to put some, some data lace, right especially this one that has yeah. beautiful red uh, center sure. to it. Not only that, and the, they're so hardy, like the, you know, the grassiness of it, when there's no flower there, it's kind of cool looking still. Black-eyed Susan is another nice option. It's a, a real traditional plant, uh, and it comes up later in the summer, so that's nice for late season color. What's the height? 18 inches? Yeah. Hostas. And the only disadvantage of hostas is it does um, disappear into the ground in the winter, so it's just earth showing, so. I wonder if she'll go for, you know, like this yellow, the red. maybe the red in it or something like that. I don't know. I don't see why not. I mean, I love this, it's amazing. Although yellow is the most cool. popular color to dislike. Meanwhile, progress continues in Roman's yard, where we're installing the arbor post. Okay. Give So this is going to have a, a trellis or pergola yeah, yeah, uh, yes. top to it. Yeah. So yeah. the detail on that still has to be worked out. Yeah. We're almost there with the arbor design, except for the beams sticking out from the roof. It's got to be a little more consistent with the style of the house. Lauren's come up with a very simple solution. See the oven? I'm talking about just the edges of it. Maybe do a little molding detail around that. Yeah. Oven. Basically, we're going to take a cue from their interior and add crown molding to the arbor. Actually, the more I look at the house, the more I like the molding idea. Often the simplest solution is the best solution. <laughs> Patio and stairs are in, as are the posts. The water features being built were golden. Now it's time to install the screens, to give us some privacy and disguise the new shed. That's why we painted the black on the shed so it kind of disappears in behind the grid. That looks pretty sweet, actually. Well, not that sweet. Everything was going along smoothly. We just got new instructions from Elaine. She actually wants to take out the screen. Gone. Just has Completely gone? Yeah. Nothing to do with workmanship? Better not be. <laughs> she, uh... Doesn't like it. She, does, she feels like it's an add-on. All right. This one... So I see the board and battens went on, which is actually pretty cool. Okay, the whole shed was black with the whole idea of lattice work going on in front of it, and eventually the vines growing through it. The total black the client didn't like. She came out too loud. I liked it. I thought uh, that it provided a great focal point for looking out the window. Elaine, on the other hand, uh, thought that uh, it was too much of a focal point, and as a result, wanted it uh, muted back to sort of the original texture. We decided to board and batten the whole thing, put the screen back up, leave it over the weekend to see if it'll grow on her. If not, the screen is coming out as well. We calculated the squares perfectly up and down, side to side, so they're all the same. Now, with the battens in the background, you can't tell what's part of the square and what's not. See that, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Looks like a mess now. On Friday, it was like, take the screen out. Now Elaine's completely okay with the screens. Just the one beside the patio has to be tightened up the lattice work. It's the same opening as this. Just tighten them up so you have four squares instead of one. It just comes down to vines growing on this. If vines grew on it, and it may, in the end, in five years from now, you'd be like, wow, these are nice. It's all stark. There's no planting issues. Right. More about the planting. Yeah, She's been yeah, scared yeah. of the stonework ever since we started. Well, that planting. happens all the time. Is this patio too big? Yeah. I'm like, the this is nothing. Wait till the arbor and everything else is up. You're going to be going, oh my god, what did I get? You know what? All the stonework, the new shed and screens, this place is looking fantastic. So is the water feature with the instead of the. Are you going to be plugging this in soon, or are you going to have to figure out how to put this thing together? Well, I think we just plug her in and she's ready to go. Just hope that sounds not too loud. People tell you right away. They're like, yeah, I don't like that water feature. 
sound makes me want to go wash them. You know, but you, and that, that's not what you're trying to create. You're trying to create a feeling of like nature, not this, not to be annoying. That's pretty quiet. Something's wrong. Yeah, Ron, why don't you unplug it with your wet hands? Okay. Now I'll let it go. It's grounded though, right? That's weird. If this doesn't work, we smash it. What's the old joke? How many landscapers does it take to plug in a water feature? See, you should have got Dave to plug it in all along. See, you You're the wrong in. guy plugging it in. Ooh. That's sexy, man. That's nice. Kenny's listening to the noise. You know what? It's, it's way more dramatic than I thought it was going to be. The water feature's working, and Lauren and Joel are digging this yard. For some reason, with the arbor and the shed all being over on one side, you have the feeling that it could go lopsided, but it's not at all. I think the water feature grounds it out. In the planting line. Well, that's, it. yeah, exactly. The plant material is going to give it a nice balance on either side. Ah, oh, the plant material. As soon as we finish the stonework, we can start with the planting. Or can we? She doesn't want to use red, yellow, or orange, and I think okay. most of the plants were in that kind of yellow area, so it just, she wants all blues and purples and whites. Mm -hmm. So these are the areas now that need to be filled in. And she wants vines on all the fencing all around. Okay, so uh, do you think silver lace vine would be too uh, intrusive, or too Probably. rapid? It'll grab onto everything. Sweet autumn clematis. Yeah. That'd be perfect. I think it may be on this screen. Even, you know, even the cat surgery tree has a yellow fall color. Is that okay with her? I don't think there's a tree with blue. No, or white. What was the other color? Blue, white, and purple? Yeah. You can get it. There's no fall colors. I can... Hmm. I heard they ever do this, but one maiden grass. Oh, on the yeah. bottom of the step. How artistic. Predominantly, the whole backyard is going to be blue and white garden. Whenever you have shade, there's not a lot of hot color plants that do well in the shade because they lose their color when you get a lot more shade happening. You start losing a lot more of the interesting part of the plant because it reverts back to just being green and not flowering so much. Thankfully, she likes white because you can get a lot of white flowering plants for shade. Everybody thinks when they have shade, they can't even grow things. I think there's a lot out there you can grow. We're keeping the plants by the house below. So when the clients look out, they'll be able to see the entire yard unfold in front of them. And now that the plants are in, the final touch is furniture. And what kind of look are they going for? More traditional, more modern? It's traditional interior. It's, you know, just upgraded. So natural? More than, yeah, more natural. No steel? No steel. But this was just to have the coffee up here. That's why this whole walkout was so big, because it's so private in that spot. And just to have, come out and have a coffee, as opposed to going down formally sitting at a big table. So that was the main kind of dining area to get them away from the kitchen, because it's immediately the kitchen is just inside the doors there. Sounds good. It's well, I'll let you take it away. Do your thing. And the next time we see this place, it'll be completely done. Oh, that's good. But today, Lisa's bringing in the finishing touches, so soon it's going to look like this. I had actually been during construction once or twice, but to see it finished looks absolutely amazing. This is a beautiful job. We've been part of the process every step of the way, and it's actually come out way better than we thought. This is what we tell people all the time. You come out and the patio looks large, and it looks like it's going to overwhelm the site. And all right. the furniture is on, and it's back to like a... Every totally... meeting. Yeah. Every meeting during construction. Isn't it? The furniture. patio's too big? I'm like, no, big. just wait till you see furniture in it. It's, it's sure. never big enough. Clients put a lot of investment in their garden, and often at the end, they don't put uh, really beautiful furniture in. Maybe it's a budget issue, but often I think it's just easier for them to go to the local hardware store and buy these $2 chairs, and that really yeah. plays down the garden. I think it's worthwhile to put a little thought into the furniture that goes in. And yeah, we view it the same as interiors. You don't have to have patios of this caliber with this type of stone. I mean, you know, this is all labor-intensive and expensive, but you don't have to go that route, but you can still have this layout. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this could be pea gravel. The idea of sitting by the water feature, I love it. That's a great idea. That's a perfect little nook. And you can almost lay there and read a book. Oh. Is there room for three? Let's God, I wish I had this. <laughs> I wish I owned this. We took almost everything out of this yard, but we left the locust for the overhead canopy. Now, locusts are great for providing filtered sunlight. 
The whole back is intended to be climbing hydrangea on the back of that wall. So when you're sitting here, the whole thing is just going to be this wall of green, which they can grow in the shade. Right. There's this traditional view of design that there's a patio, so it has to be totally yeah. covered with an arbor. And here we have a large patio, only half its arbor. Yeah. And it just breaks it up and it works beautifully. Yeah. And it feels like you can go to this place on one side of the arbor where it's nice atmosphere above you, and then you can go out into the openness too. The client has said from the get-go, it's kind of an adult entertainment garden now. As soon as you're given that kind of leeway to kind of play like that, it's not like you have to leave a space open for the kids to play and stuff, so you can just design wall to wall. It's one thing actually was kind of neat about this garden is they didn't change the fencing at all because that's just a huge waste right. of money. Yeah. It's like we could change it to cedar because cedar is nicer. It's all pressure treated, but it's been here forever and it's fine. This was taking the lead from the client in their interior because their interior kind of resembles the same exterior, which I'd love to do. These colors are inside and the vibe inside is classic kind of feeling. People should do that one. If they have a crazy interior, do a crazy outside. If you have a traditional, do a traditional. You know, that's who you are. But you don't really notice, I don't think, when there's so much visual feast going on that there's no lawn back here. You know, yeah, there's, there's stuff to look at well, and the furniture's all kind of great. The clients wanted a uh, lower maintenance garden yeah. right with no lawn. The cat thoroughly enjoys it. Uh, she has lots of different places to go and explore and just frolic around. It really is nice to sit in the garden after, without the stone saws going, without the <laughs> dirt being brought in. Like, you know, it's oh, a uh, white cushion. I don't think we get to sit in the garden after it's done enough. This is dynamite. I hate it. It's just a big patch of grass. There's nothing there. Wow, this place is wide open. We need to bring in some privacy and a way more elegant way to access all of the space from inside the house. Somewhere we can step outside, enjoy morning coffee on the weekends. Is there any preference between materials? Maybe? I think in our minds we always thought of a wood deck. We definitely want an area for our son to run in and play in. Is there a style that you want to stay with? Something that is more clean lined. Okay. And we don't want to stick out like right. a sore thumb, but right. we also don't want to blend right in. And she wants to maintain a little bit of that kind of real urban kind of feeling to this yard. It's going to be really, really stylish. We would like some vegetable planting, herb garden, that type of thing. It's good because, I mean, full sun, you can do it. Mm -hmm. He's got so many options available to him that he might not know which way to go because it is a big blank slate. That's a landscaper's dream. And Lauren is here to help make that dream a reality. You know what? It's a landscape fantasy land. Lauren always sees the big picture. Look at all the opportunities for work. They need landscaping. They need landscaping. They need landscaping. They need landscaping. It's actually cool because they don't have a house directly behind them. They, just, uh, this, they have this corridor of a view all the way down. Six. Six feet. The grades are going to be an issue. Look at the way it slopes down there and goes down into the property line really quite steeply. So we're going to have to do a lot of yeah, a lot of grades for this for sure. Perfect. What is that? Two foot one for a suburban garden. I mean, it's pretty big. When we put all the stuff in it, you're like, wow, it instantly feels bigger. It's true. It always feels bigger after we're done. With such a big yard and so many options, I'd like to hear what my partners think. They want that urban kind of feel in the backyard. They want kind of slick, modern kind of feeling to it. This is what the site looks like. There is nothing here. It's all totally flat. It is completely not flat. It is like seven feet from here to the finished floor elevation. And so some of the costs are gonna be hidden in retaining walls yeah. and things. If we do a retaining wall around this, it has to be 18 inches back from the property line. Because it's so open and sun's an issue, which way is the southern exposure? It so is full sun, just basically yeah. full sun. So shade for people, not for so much for plant material. Right. They want good. a vegetable garden? Oh, vegetable garden. You know, before in the 70s, everybody did it. 80s, 90s, it disappeared. It feels like it's coming back now, huge. Yeah. This is one of these places where they have a big side yard here, so I think we can take advantage of that. That would be really cool. And this faces west, so yeah. this is gonna be a really hot, sunny area here. Trees, we have to bring them in because nothing's gonna say garden more than a couple of huge trees bringing. I love I that, though. Many. This is, right. talk about, this is the best opportunity in the world to blow a client's mind because there's nothing. <laughs> mind blowing, you got that right. The primary goal, to make the most of Tanya's space. So this is a great area for uh, bringing into the backyard. Yep. There's a lot of room here to kind of play with too, so. It might be fun to sort of do something where we wrap the deck around that side of the house and then she can uh, view this part of the garden and the other two sides as well. And then they'll spill down if they're entertaining into other areas. Yeah, or we'll the, get, or an, and you only have a kid, play. right? So yeah. we have to leave a lot of the space open for playing. 
going to be a challenge for us to make it sassy and without being too flashy for, for the area. Have fun doing this one, man. Thank you. Mm, I'm thinking now. Have fun. We're taking the city and going back out to the suburbs to see Tanya with her new drawing of her backyard. It's going to be good. Hope she loves it. It's pretty windy, Kennedy. One second. I think I need more rocks. So what we want to do is we wanted to maximize the side yard. And it was a perfect location to do the vegetable garden. And when you walk down through it, you get to where this elevated deck is. The shape of the awning above this is like more of an organic kind of feel to it. And this will just have this kind of really little bit of whimsy in it that just has this kind of stretched fabric that that is what's going to be your cover over your deck. Oh, sounds okay. interesting. We're going to take this whole slope here and kind of lower it. This whole area and all the way down here is going to be level. And then open play area for the kids. We're thinking this is where the dinner kind of area is. OK. And we're going to do an arbor above it. Like an outdoor dining room. Yeah. From what I see, you definitely hit on uh, all of our requirements. Mm -hmm. Looks exciting. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait either. Mother Nature may have other ideas, but we're not going to let a cold snap stop us. Yesterday was a beautiful day out. Today is just flurries. <laughs> Well, we're anticipating it's going to be a little bit slow and tedious at first, but once we get through this, it should be smooth sailing. <laughs> Who's got two thumbs and likes digging in clay? This guy. Digging here is horrendous. Horrible, horrible digging. With the design that we proposed, we've leveled off all this hill because it's, it's useless right now. To get the grades we're after, we'll cut away from the high spot near the house and push it to the back and corners. To keep it well drained, we're installing a weeping bed around the property's edge. We'll hold back the newly raised area with a retaining wall. This is the type of soil that we hate the most. It's red clay, it sticks to everything. Basically, it's like concrete. Thank God it hasn't been raining, because if it rained one day, we wouldn't be here for like seven. A second retaining wall will create a new upper patio and dining area. For this, we're using poured concrete. Our twist, to make simple, cheap concrete look like wood. You'll see. When you're doing design and you keep kind of pushing to try and do different things, not 100% sure it's always gonna work out, but you gotta try. What do you think, Chris? The green's gonna work out or what? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I'm excited. A little nervous. Oh man, this is sweet. I love this. From sweet to sweeter. Trying something a little different to shade Tanya's deck. Can I have one of those sails? You know, the sails. I love those sails. I think those are so up and coming, man. We found a sailcloth product that can be cut into any shape you like. Still gives shade, still lets light through. Well, we're trying to balance because it's our opportunity with sunlight to do it. Yeah, exactly. Cool perennials. Right on Screenery. You know, it's shaded everywhere. Screenery and greenery. It's going to be beautiful, practical, and different, all right, once we get there, because this could happen. If it rained one day, we wouldn't be here for like seven. Well, it rained, and we haven't got seven days. Kevin's going to have to improvise to finish the post holes for our arbor. And I'm anxious to see how our new wood grain concrete retaining wall turns out. <laughs> Kennedy can sell ketchup popsicles to a woman in white gloves. <laughs> Not sure if the design for the retaining wall is exactly a ketchup popsicle. At least I hope it goes down better. Once you get it cleaned up and look at it, it's part of the whole job, it'll look OK. Supposedly when it dries, that wood grain will pop out a bit more. This is the desired effect of the, of the wall Kennedy's looking for. If the whole thing turns out like that, we're laughing. That's laughing and singing in the rain. Despite the mucky weather, we push on, adding stone steps to the retaining wall and erecting and cementing the post for the arbor. While that happens, Lauren and I zero in on greening up this wasteland. Some opinions are not welcome. I know these are gonna be sunburst honey locusts, I know that for sure. I mean, they have a yellow hue, the new growth. Yeah. There's no trees in this whole backyard right now, and then the instant impact with some big, large trees that come in here. These I know are gonna be columnar trees. We just have yes. to decide what type of columnar trees. Like, well, down here, I think we sort of want to block the view off. I think something like a crab apple might work well here. I think it's this. Because this is really 50 feet long. Grasses? I 
think we so. got so much oh, sunlight here. What, they'll keep a perfect form. So maiden grass, which is the common yep. name, of course. Uh, Northern, Northern lights, that'd be great for there. Yeah, because as a variegated leaf, and you need the full sun to keep the, the variegated coloring. So we need some space for the vegetables. Yeah, that'll be here. But I know you were saying something about getting roses in here. Might be nice to have a nice sunny spot for the roses, maybe adjacent to the vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. Carpet roses, one they grow to about this high, and just this. That's just... kind of cool. Nice choice of plants. Yeah, it's I'm looking forward to this. Me too. The sun is back, and the work at Tanya's is going full speed. I always feel that vertical elements are where you should splurge. And since the plants take up a lot of our budget, we'll save money installing these man-made pavers. The light gray color really complements the tan brick of the house. The horizontal elements are what have me concerned right now. Seems one of our retaining walls is, well, not retaining. Here's why. The big problem was just the excessive machine work that uh, basically the tires and the ruts and all the soft clay actually pushed the, the wall over. So um, we're just reinforcing it. Once it's all sod and stuff, I don't want to uh, come back and dig up sod. And now's the time to get it right. So basically, we got to go back and uh, add some tiebacks into it. Some things you should always steer clear of. <laughs> Bless you. The honey locust? Honey locust. And, these and are this the, is sunburst. These are the sunburst variety. variety. Yeah. It's so vibrant, man. It's a great choice. I love how chartreuse green it gets in the, uh, in the sunshine. We have them coming right out of the gravel, the fine gravel, so it's just yes. the trees sticking right out of the gravel. Actually, that won't be a problem at all. It's all what's in the soil underneath, so you can just have a, a I know what you're talking about, like a topical gravel, so it looks like these are growing out of gravel. Yeah. Anybody can do it. The trees will grow really well there. Very European, yeah. that is exactly what it's, it's like. That's the feeling. And uh, dappled shade. It's a great one to allow filtering sunlight below. It's not a dense shade. I know the color is great. I want this willow. Oh, that's quite different. Dappled willow. Yeah, and this color is spectacular, man. The, yeah. And I want to do it down the side mm -hmm. of their house where the walkway is. So it kind of tones the brick down a little bit. Yeah. It's going to look fantastic, man. James, this is what I'm looking for, Simisifuga. Simisifuga. It can handle a little bit more shade. And at Tanya's place, this is going to go right up against the house where the house is continually casting the shade on them. So we're doing it kind of exactly like this. So to get this whole long kind of planting yeah, plant going it. on. I think I'll order it. these for her. Yeah, sweet. Let's Beautiful. do it. Another beautiful sunny day in Tanya's wide open backyard. You can really see the need for a shade system. Only question now is, what color works best? That is going to look so cool, man. Well, like, well, the next door neighbor already wants one. They're going to do really well. Yeah. It's going to be a new trend. I think we're going to go with two colors in the end. It's going to look really uh, nice. I think it's going to be black and tan. Uh, yeah. I think the reason these colors work is because if you do a shocking color or whatever, it's fun for a weekend. You know it, what? You have to look at it all the time. It'll drive you crazy. The black and tan will look great with the Ipe deck. Ipe is a beautiful coffee-colored South American wood. It's harder than stone and will last forever. The unique grain will give Tanya's deck a real modern urban appeal. The great thing about these is if you prune them, the new growth is that pink and white. Incredible looking. Man. And if you let them go, they will get kind of scraggly, but then they lose their color sometimes too. So it's best so to continue to whack them back. Right. This is lovely. I love it. It's kind of well, awesome. This is it, right? Like you can see down here, you can see the whole backyard from here. This is like the power point right here. Look at that. Instantly, the hedge starts creating this block in privacy. You know, good fences make good neighbors, but good hedging makes even better neighbors. Yeah. Because the fence, just a fence is kind of cold, but with this nice columnar tree, it's going to be very beautiful. There's a note on the post over here. To the fence guys, please watch out for this tree. It has a bird nest in it. It's amazing, isn't it? Watch the mother's going to come and whack us in the head in a minute. Sweet. No. I'm convinced these changes are going to knock our client's socks off, but the concrete wall might take a little more convincing. It kind of looks cool, the near lines like that all the way down. It's almost so subtle you don't notice it, but I think once the grass and everything goes in, it'll be really appreciated over time. Well, think of hanging out here with you know, the kids playing right here. I love it. Our backyard's gone through a huge change, and it's much more enjoyable to look out at nature. It's great to be able to come out to the deck now. 
once the shades come in, we'll be jumping for joy. Jumping for joy? We think she'll be over the moon. I didn't realize it was this transparent. Uh, it's very breathable, so it cools down the area underneath it. Right. And also for the wind resistance as well. It lets, it lets wind through quite a bit. So we went with black and that's yep. the tan. This is called desert sand. Yep. These two go really well together. Is this UV protection? This color here is up to, uh, has 99% UV protection, which is the same as 50, 50 plus sunscreen. What's the UV on the desert sand? 96%. They're so unobtrusive too, eh? There's no bar in the middle. Nope. Doesn't take exactly. up any room or make a distraction when you're talking to people on the... God, you're gonna be doing a million of these. I'm feeling super confident now. There's no better time to have our designer over for a look. This is, uh, obviously loungy. It's unbelievable. And that was just to shade this whole area because it's so blistering hot in this backyard. That works beautifully. Yeah. What's the story with the family? You know, they moved from the city and they came to the suburbs and they want to maintain that kind of urban quality to it. Stylish, yeah, I think stylish. maybe is what you're going for. Yes. When you think of downtown, stylish. Something at the end of this long strip would be so amazing. And have a sitting area here where all you see is this great view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, you know, they want that little bit of funk in here, you know? Like they want this kind of just different feeling back here. Yeah. So I think looking for something unique is a good idea, yeah. whether it's a fireplace or water feature, or even tables to frame Art a space. Piece, whatever. Art piece. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. No, that's great. Okay. I'll leave it in your hands. Excellent. Now it's a race to the finish line. The color scheme for this area is black and tan. Yes. So I'm going to play with that. Or maybe a hit of a, just one red cushion in the midst of all tan Beautiful. and black. And walking down the stairs, it's a really nice large space with the grass and the patio. So nice big table for under the arbor. Okay. I would love to get a bright red carpet just to add a punch cool. over there. Totally. Also, when you have a huge hallway, in this case, it's an outdoor hallway right. with it huge honkin' sculpture at the end of it. It focuses your attention down at the end. And if you look back down the hallway at the other end, yep. something like an outdoor bed. Yep. Something like so this. So nice. That's basically one, two, three, four areas. OK. Excellent. That so it? that's it. I can't wait to see the sculpture. Thanks, Kennedy. Thanks, Harold. Beautiful. I really love the fact that you use the side of the garden for planting a uh, kitchen garden. It's great use of yeah. space, James. It is, yeah. Wow. It's going to be potatoes wow. soon. What do we got here? Wow, look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Holy look cow, this looks amazing. This looks I like a hotel, it. man. Before we started, the garden would be best described as nothing. Now, it would be a backyard oasis. You know, you're just staring at a blank page going, OK. Why would we divide the space up this way? Typically, we end the decks at the edge of the house like yeah. this. But we stuck it out because oh. we get to enjoy all down the oh. side of the house, too, because they have so much room down there. He's provided us with ideas that we didn't even know existed. For example, the sails. We had to put in the sails for the sun. This back here was just like the desert out here. It was just brutal. But you know what? They got a little bit of a curve on each one of the uh, Side that makes them kind of sexy. Ooh, well, now you're what? talking. The feeling is incredible underneath those. And those locusts are going to create the perfect shade because the leaves are so small. And it's going to canopy even the dinner area. It's a nice, cozy feeling with the trees around us. Well, the steps, eh? Nice and wide. Look, two people can walk down yeah, at the same you time. You glide down these stairs. My son loves the design. He's able to go up and down the stairs without any problems. He loves being able to run on the patio area. He also loves playing with all this well. We're not so happy about that, but he is. You would never know this is a big grading issue at this property because right now it's all quite leveled, but there's walls that you don't really see. Notice he used concrete too, he's a nice form. They wanted something a little more urban. I was born and raised in the city and have only been living in the suburbs for the last two years. I wanted to bring some of those city elements here. Trying to maintain that urban kind of feeling is just a very kind of linear feeling to it, not these kind of curvy beds. All the plantings are kind of linear like that. I really like the uh, blocks of planting too, I think they're wonderful. Gardens change so dramatically year after year. These grasses are going to be six, seven feet high. When you sit down for dinner there, you're going to block out this whole lower area. So the less you can see in a garden, the more interested it actually becomes because it's not all given away right away. Right? You got to see this this window down here. Oh, let's go right. check it out, man. For sure. Check. The intention was for kids to have open lawn area, but 
As an adult, you come down, you're like, it's kind of a great viewing point. You can actually create this just in your own yard, you know, just by narrowing the, the scope a little bit and then putting a major, major object at the end. When I walk out, I feel happy, peaceful, like I have a place that suits my style, so it accomplishes everything. I think it's worked. I think I we think pulled, pulled this it off. off man. Be very cool. Okay, let's get back to the urban. It's 100 huh? miles away from civilization, but you know what? It works. Kevin and Jessica, hey. how are you? Nice James Dale. Thanks for the call, Kevin. Pleasure. Um, I would describe our backyard just basically as a big open space. <laughs> There's nothing in it right now, so it's a blank canvas. So this is a great property. I mean, it's a large cornered lot, and you're sharing the side with the back. So what is it that you're looking for in the garden? We're looking for something kind of boutique-y, boutique hotel type thing, maybe a little spa, clean lines, that type of stuff. Fireplace. In interesting, <laughs> fireplace. We have a lot of clients that they go somewhere and they see something spectacular, so they want to repeat it in the backyard. So I'm getting a sense of that. Yeah, that absolutely. So the deck. So are you attached to this at all? Absolutely not. So we can detach it from the you from the do house? whatever you want. It's incredible that you've got such a beautiful home and this this property is just waiting to be used. So we'll create another outdoor room for you and uh, we should get started on that. So I've got to get here with Lauren right away. We've got to measure the, and uh, take all the grades and put them on the drawing so we know exactly how many stairs are going to go in and where the water's going to go. On the wish list is a hot tub, so uh, privacy is going to become really important because I wouldn't want to get in my BVDs and get in that hot tub with all these houses looking at me. You so. sure you wouldn't? Uh, well, this Jesus. is steep, isn't it? This grade is steep. Oh, you can see over here there's going to be a problem. Yeah, this is really strange. I mean, the side yard here the, to the neighbor to the north is elevated three feet. It's almost like they dammed the whole backyard. I mean, the neighbors have done it by building up, yeah. and, but the builder's done it by building this hump and mm -hmm. also hump over there. We got a lot of measuring to do, but I'm so happy there's not a lot of trees in our way. Yeah, this should yeah. be pretty quick. It'll be pretty quick. All right, let's go. This is going to be a huge logistical challenge. To make it right, we've got to be precise. Oh, <laughs> I think I just broke it, Lauren. Uh, it's okay, it's just the bottom part. It's my abuse of nature. Okay, Lauren, 86.25, 58. Okay. To 88. Okay, that's 88 and one cartwheel. For Lauren, it's something verging on scary. Better check in with the boys to hash out a direction. Kevin and Jessica. Kevin and Jessica. They don't want a regular hot tub you buy at the store, those yeah. uh, you know, eight by eight things yeah. you plunk in. They want Pretty a custom fast. designed, Beauty. Oh, poured. Want... Whenever you yeah. pour a concrete tub, it gives us a lot more flexibility in design. Does it ever? I'm gonna have a hot tub in it when it's done. I'm Maybe thinking. they'll invite us over. These are classic infill housings. They, they sit rather high. They're about three floors high and fairly small gardens for the size of the house. Mm. I think mature trees are really going to be important to yeah. tone down the scale of the house. And I think that one of the things here that could be working to our advantage is that because it's a corner property and it widens at the back here, we can take advantage of this, this side of the property right now. Mm -hmm. I'm with Lauren Hancock, senior designer, Dirty Business. We gotta save money on each individual item because they all add up in the end, right? The water sits in that area here, so we have to provide some sort of a French drain, uh, maybe one to that is, playing with a French drain? Yeah, it was invented by this guy named Henry French, actually, in Massachusetts. And they're very simple, underground, full of gravel. What'll happen is it creates a, a fake low point where all the water is going to rush into and keep the top dry. So and that's it, a really And it simple, drains on site. That's right. And it drains off site. And that's a good point. Which is illegal anyway to do. Yeah. All right. I'm going to Wikipedia this tonight. Go ahead. But it sounds fascinating. Go for it. This has been James Dale with Lauren Hancock for Dirty Business Television. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Have a great night. Nah, I don't think he's watching. Maybe I don't. Kevin and Jessica are a with it couple. Along with their amazing spa, we're including some green space. Should there be kids in a not too distant future? My guess is it's sooner rather than later. I'm really, really excited to show you what we've come up with. So right away, we're going to be taking the deck off, as I was talking about. We're going to be putting in a new one, but with some stairs and some glass railings. It's going to be a concrete poured spa. And then you're going to be invited down a couple stairs to the main patio area. And then we're going to have a storage shed on focal at the back. And then you've got this long LA of grass here. So then the visually, this will connect through a set of steps. Is there anything that you see that doesn't sit right with you? This is perfect for us and what we want to do. And kind of seems like it's a great compromise for everything. Very good. I liked where he put the spa because, you know, when you look at the kitchen, you know, you can see the spa and it looks really pretty. And then he used the, um, I guess the shed area is a focal point at the other end, so it finishes off really nicely. You achieve that sort of outside room kind of look. This is going to be the main room of the house. 
Okay then, let's get this party started. Remember those French drains? They're going in at the lowest level of the grade. Excess water will flow in, keeping it on the property. So that's a good thing. To allow more room for another French drain in the corner, I've designed it on a slight angle. The tiny deck is saying bye-bye. This is gonna be spectacular. A strong foundation and proper drainage prevents many headaches. We only want water in the bubbling spa. Oh, and speaking of bubbling, Kevin came home, looked out the window, he sees this big post in front of his window. Well, that's, you know, that's gonna set off an, uh, an alarm if, uh, if you're the homeowner. The owners of this very empty space have a very long list. Spa. Massive list. Deck. Shed. Lounge. Retaining. Fireplace. Privacy screens. To make this spa spectacular, it's sink or swim. The backyard's a bit of a pit. So right away I'm trying to figure out where's the water going. French drains are taking care of that. And we're digging the in-ground spa. Here's the 101 on concrete. It's big on compression, short on tension. This means it needs reinforcing bar or rebar to bear the constant pressure of the water. That and tons of belly flops. That's my wish for Kevin and Jessica. To choose the best options for this custom spa, I'm gonna get some custom advice. If you can see in the back corner here, we're thinking about this little 10 by 10 spa. I wanna do like probably a black sort of tiling around the perimeter of the pool. What type of finishes are available for this, uh, this tub? I think primarily you're gonna look at a waterline tile with the rest uh, being plaster. We use armor coat, different colors of that. And then a very upgraded type finish would be to actually tile the whole inside. I think those are the main two finishes that you would wanna look at here. Beautiful. Mark, I was thinking we put the equipment right here on the corner. What do you think about that? The heater has to be a minimum of 10 feet off of any opening into the house, any opening windows, any vents. That's a big deal because uh, I guess you're talking about carbon monoxide, right? It is. Uh, yeah. I think down here would be more appropriate, sort of down in the corner. It's because it's going to be out of view of the main garden area. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of loud too, so yeah. that's another thing to consider. Yeah. Well, that's great, Mark. Um, you know what? I am looking so forward to having this thing put in. A good fence has got to be secure as well as give privacy. We're starting with tall posts so they can be later trimmed to height. The client thought the, the top of that post was the top of the yeah, arm, so he's freaking out. This happens all the time when posts are installed. A client's phone, they panic a little bit, but I call it post-traumatic hey. stress disorder because they're just seeing the backbone of the, the posts going in and they don't know what the finished product's gonna look like necessarily. In order to put posts in the ground, you gotta dig four feet down below frost. You have to put this big post up. We've bought extra sized posts. So right away, they're standing, it looks like 12 feet in the air. That's because we've got to set our, our line and then cut them all at the end. The construction crew and my kids have one thing in common. They love playing in the mud. Despite the mess, the crew is breaking speed records on the fence. And a huge fence it is. The perfect backdrop for a step cedar deck. Lots of hardscaping going in. We've got to start thinking about softening it up with just the right plant mix. So we have to pick this one. Yeah. What do you think that should be? Well, it's got to be columnar. It's going to be something that grows together over time. It might be nice to uh, go with the columnar crab. I know we use them often. If we use the Siberian crab yeah, apple with the time. little orange uh, little uh, berries. Bit. Maybe we should do something that provides year-round interest. So in the winter... Euonymus coloratus. Uh, <laughs> excellent choice. The Euonymus coloratus will provide a beautiful winter interest. It turns that beautiful plum color when yeah. it's colder. Oh, I love that aspect. Grasses and water mix beautifully together. There's one plant that I really love. I think it's called, it's a Calamagrosis brachytrica, which is um, autumn feather reed grass. Are you speaking German right now? Uh, Latin. I think that's a good call. I think it's going to be nice, uh, light, wavy when the wind blows. It's going to get us looking from a mud pit to a garden. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Back on site, the fence posts have been trimmed to their proper height and now open the view from the kitchen window. We had, at one point, a big fence post in the middle of our kitchen window. You know, a quick panic called to James and stuff like that and asked him what's going on, and he kind of had one of the guys basically just pencil in where I was gonna go. I felt like an idiot after the fact, <laughs> but there was basically a pencil line on it saying, fence post stops here, and then it's below the kitchen window so it doesn't show up, but you know, the initial shock value of having this big post in the middle of the kitchen window kind of screwed us up. 
So everything's working out well at this job. Yeah, it's great. You know, it's been a really good job. A good clients. There's quite a bit of wood there. There is. So I'm just concerned that and it's all the same color, so it looks a little bit monotone. That maybe we should perhaps stain uh, either the arbor or the well, lower wall just to make it. Does it look heavy? Well, it just looks like there's a lot of wood. It does look like a, an ad for a, a cedar company. I know right. what you're talking about. I was there. But that's my only concern. Otherwise, I think it's going to look great. Next, we're adding some stunning detail to the arbors. I'm making a box to hold all the lateral cedar. <laughs> Stuff that runs horizontally along the top there, they have to be framed. Because full lengths will sag, will eventually bend. So these will support the weight. With everything so right, how could it go so wrong? Four words. Large tractor, small hole. The landscapers come in here, right? And one of their machines broke down, the one behind you there. So we haven't been able to remove this, and I'm not sure the owner's going to be too happy. Ever try to unstick a stuck bobcat? It's not easy. We managed to get rid of the bobcat, finally. Um, they came and fixed it last week, got it out of here. So we can actually set up our gear now and uh, get some work done. It's good. So the spa's moving along at a nice clip, and we're roughing in the outdoor fireplace. Oh, we're going to bury this gas line today, eventually when they move their workbench. As I just figured out, it's a little short. I guess I'll be giving Jay a call and see what he wants to do about that. The backyard right now really looks like a pile of dirt. Sorry, <laughs> James, but uh, yeah, just wood and dirt. And uh, we do have hope that it'll come to fruition sometime in the near future. So hopefully for the baby. <laughs> the crews are in overdrive while Kennedy and I visit our kind of nursery for the plants. Japanese maple, buddy. Look at this, it's totally different leaf. It is, yeah. First of all, I didn't want to use a red leaf, meaning a, a blood good maple or a, a crimson king, which are the red species. This goes with any red brick home or pinky brick home. You know, these are focal trees, so you want them, you know, placed in an area where you can see them. So you put this in front of a red wall, it's lost. I wanted to use something that's more vibrant in light against the brick, and a full moon maple, I think it's just gorgeous now. And actually more of a focal point. Look at how beautiful the structure of this one is. One more I'm looking for, and uh, it's one we spec for, uh, again, a great filler plant. And I think it, here it is right here. It's a white flower, uh, Spirea snow mound. Looks like a snowman. Dust this snow off here. Oh, it's not a snow, it's a flower. Anyway, this is why I like this. I mean, it's, it's a real surefire shrub, a great filler, great color. Hardy. Uh, hardy. All the, all the spireas are really hardy. Yeah, that's right. Back at Kevin and Jessica's, these long pipes will keep the pool machinery as far as possible from the spa and the house. Three pumps are needed. One circulates the water and the chemicals. Two are high pressure booster pumps for the jets. Each jet line also has an airline to create the bubbles that feel so good. The deck and the spa are coming together. Even the fireplace is cooking with gas. Yeah, it came through there pretty good. You put a perfect extension on there. You guys are gonna be here the next day, hook it up the fireplace. This baby better light my fire. Right there, it's okay, who are the dudes with the cool shoes? And where can I get some? Do some damage. These guys are troweling on Marbleite, a mixture of cement and marble dust for a smooth, non-slip finish over a slippery concrete base. Don't forget, you're sitting on this stuff. As you can see, it's hardening as we trowel, so you have to move quick. You notice the shoes are wearing spike shoes here. Basically, these shoes have four spikes in the bottom of them. Uh, note the floor, all full of spike holes. Um, the floor's still wet, so what we do is we just keep passing it to close up the spike holes. As it hardens and we can't close them anymore, okay, we put on these sponge shoes here, basically. Uh, so we walk on the, on the surface and we pull back the cream as it goes along and we basically hop out with these. If you're wondering how we get actually get out of here at the, when it's all said and done. Okay, who ordered the salad? This is like an amusement park for trees. Yeehaw! As the plants arrive and the soil is blown in place, we're a twirl or two away from the finishing touches. This plant creates a really cool mood. It's that's what I like. That's what I like about it. And that's why There's I, nothing I, bashful I, about a yucca. No, it brings uh, memories uh, of the tropics or uh, further down south. So I know there are uh, hornbeams now here, James, and not to call them a crab. Is there a reason why it was changed? The columnar crabs were all hit by disease, so we okay. don't want them at all in the, in the uh, neighborhood. Actually, I sourced these, and the, the grower gave me them for the same price, and they're actually far better than what was specced here. I love the density of them. 
Me too. James, yeah. this isn't the golden full moon maple. We got a full moon maple. It was crated. It was worth probably about three grand. Oh, so I see. So it wasn't what we spec'd here. Okay. Um, this planting plan is not a mature planting plan. It will grow in. So actually, we found a beautiful heart of gold, Circus canadensis, or otherwise known as the red bud. Right, of course. Huh. Uh, this is not acceptable for the entrance to the uh, The garden. drainage is working perfectly. The water feature is supposed to be over there. We got a design room for pool equipment. Look at the size of this pad for just a little spa. I know, it used to be three by six, Holy I thought, but this is like, oh, well, maybe this is, no, it's about three by eight. The pool guys should get together with the plumbers and, and figure out an aesthetic way of doing this. It's a building code thing. So we move the equipment over here and here's where you see it. And do you ever see it? This is a change order thing. So we'll have to tell them we, we have to add some plants to, because we had to move the pool equipment. Right. So we'll have to add some more plants here. The spa equipment is a total eyesore. We can try to cleverly disguise it with plant material. Yep. Besides this, something a little bit higher, I think. I think we should use these Diablo 9 barks, put them in front of the pool equipment. I think that would work really well. I mean, these things get large. Look so. at the contrast between these two, and these are next, yeah. next door. Look at that. Beautiful. Too bad we can't box this in. If we did, you'd never get through the gate. All right, less dancing. Today is all about new, new sod, new spa, and inventive ways to paint without serious drips. It's a good idea. If this guy falls, at least he'll be refreshed. Meanwhile, section by section, this shed's going up. This slick space needs even slicker furniture. It's got to be durable and placed just right. Stainless steel, is that what that is? This is stainless steel, and you know, outdoor furniture has really come a long way because your options about 10, 15 years ago were like uh, plastic stacking chairs. And here we are using stainless steel. This came on the scene about four or five years ago, and the oxygen in the air creates a film on this chair that yeah. will keep it from uh, corroding. So this can stay outside. Winter, summer, it's perfect. Andrew, this piece is phenomenal. What is it? This was originally designed for hospitality environments, you know, like creating sort of chill pods around the pool. It really does make this space here. All right. Voila. It's perfect. A few more little details, and we're ready. Oh, but wait for the gem. Wait for the gem, man. Love it. Wow. Holy. Beautiful. Oh, wow. this garden is an absolute hit. This is the nicest one ever. ever. Is it, eh? it feels like you're in Miami or, or Bali. As soon as you step outside the door, voila, you are taken right away from the area. You know, Kevin and Jessica had a real nice experience in Miami, and they said, we really want that here. And, and, and I hope that we brought that to them. It well, kind of feels yeah, like that. I think it was almost, it was as much about mood as it was about design. It was Absolutely. trying to create a mood of a modern resort. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our backyard wasn't even really a backyard for us. There was no space that was usable. We never went out in the backyard, ever. <laughs> so, I mean, now we have all this useful space, and it's like, it's fabulous. The beautiful thing about this garden is that there's a lot of different areas that you can be entertained in. The spa, I mean, it can hold probably about 12 people. You've got a dining area in front of a fireplace that you can enjoy on, on, on cool summer evenings or even into the fall. A deck that you can have breakfast on. An area that the future children can play on and a little storage area. So the, the garden has a lot of different components that are united together uh, as one. There must be a trust relationship on, with presenting designs like this to a client because you're looking at proposing a double wall. And the double wall, I think, is what gives this place the atmosphere. Literally, you have built an outdoor, an outdoor room. The walls and everything. It, it opens up another room for us, basically. Yeah, now that the backyard's in, I think we're really looking forward to entertaining back there. The lounge area is fantastic for some great cocktail parties. The spa, one thing, you know, it is a state of the art. It's a swimming pool. The stairs are so inviting, it's almost a Romanesque feel, like Caeculius' home. <laughs> and then Jessica was able to find that fireplace, and it's gorgeous. It's not on right now because it's so hot, but you imagine sitting here on a cool fall evening or a, a summer evening. I mean, this summer's been quite cool, so. But it looks beautiful even now with it. It's really a beautiful architectural piece without yeah. it even running. I love how you guys have put wedged these form beams in between the two fencing. Details like this, the trees instantly become this kind of piece of art. There's no way I would have thought that this is the final product. 
and obviously it turned out to be a fantastic finish. The fact of this garden is that the furniture has brought it, really has brought it together. It's robust uh, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, you get what you pay for. I mean, up front, if you, you pay a little more, I know it's harder to sell sometimes, but it's gonna last longer. Yeah. There's no reason for them to be inside their house. It's all out here. There's no reason for them to leave and go on a vacation anymore. We kind of wanted something that had the wow factor, but didn't require the maintenance to get there. And, um, and that's kind of, I think that's what we got. We've created an, an outdoor spa that sort of takes a boutique hotel and puts it in your own backyard. When you visit Greg and Jason, this is what you see. The side of the house faces the street, the front door is somewhere else entirely, and that place is very well hidden, almost top secret. So this is my job, to get people to the front door. And the whole house is sitting on the property sideways. I mean, it faces this nice park, and yeah. we're really thrilled about that. How does anything get delivered or anything, man? It's yeah. like, yeah, you walk up like... It's a bit of a problem, where is the front yard? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, because when you see the house from the, from the park side, it's very grand. I'm sitting in the park. It looks like I'm sitting at their front door. Most of that is just old and overgrown, and we'd like to see that removed. The uh, juniper, take it away. Really? Yeah. You don't think you'd feel like really exposed if it opened up? I'd actually be prepared to take a couple of years and let something grow in that's a little more manageable yeah. and a little bit it more It wasn't aesthetic. taken care of. Bringing in a nice sort of traditional, almost an English garden feel to it, and maybe some splashes of some contemporary, some really, with some zinc, some contemporary <laughs> elements, I think will uh, really kind of just clean it up a lot. The challenges I find with this design is trying to get some privacy here, but you also don't want to block any of it because it's a great view into it. Out front, the tree on the right isn't looking so healthy. Sadly, it's time to weigh the options. We're kind of like, if it eventually is going to have to go, maybe we have to look at taking it out. Yeah, we dug up a photograph that uh, it was taken in 1964, 65, of the tree being, it had so just been planted. It's got a disease. We really, we, we should talk to the city about having it removed before it, it falls. We'll get them to the front. we got to get them to the front. Follow the yellow brick road. I'm sure Lauren will agree that this place is a bit out of the box. We need to take a good, hard look. If there's any time to be precise, it's now. Slip-ups kill. Anybody home? Nope. This isn't the front, buddy. Oh. So this is the front, but it's really the side, and yeah. it's going to be for parking. But we want to make a more inviting front entrance on the side of the house to go to the real front door. Yep, it's way down so there. Let's go take a look at the front. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Pretty cool, man. I love the front entrance. Grand-looking house, Kennedy. Yeah, it's a great frontage, eh? It almost looks like it's a pavilion for the park, the way it's located. Yep, this place has an identity crisis. With precise measurements and rock-solid land survey in hand, now's the time to get creative. This house is oddball, oddball, oddball. <laughs> it looks odd. They want people to know that this is where you're supposed to go to get to the front door. Basically, to create a garden kind of feeling right from the sidewalk all the way around to this front okay. door. While we're at it, we're going to make sense of the parking situation, adding a space that you hardly notice. The retaining wall stay, the stone ones here. All right. Along the, each side of the um, front entrance. These two trees are on city property, so we yes. have to go through the proper uh, channels of uh, permits. This one they want to take out, this one they want to leave in. The, the walkway definitely has to go. It's not only is it dated and old, it looks dangerous, it's coming apart, so yeah. there's lots of tripping things here. So People don't consider your walkway is going to cost you twice as much. All this extra square footage, a walkway can be the size of a patio sometimes. Kennedy, who owns what here? Because it looked like there's sort of a gray area between uh, where Greg and Jason own and where the city begins their, their property. Looks like the property line is the edge of the wood. Yeah, it's got to be near the edge of the wood for sure. Think. But for any hardscaping, I wouldn't cross that line. No, no. Yeah, they said if you're going to do something out front here, you know, push it right to the edge. you have any idea what the hell that is? He reminds me of someone. Someone I know. Someone who's close to me. Joel. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that could be Joel. All right. I have a feeling this brainstorm has just run into overtime. Once we find a fresh, clean copy of the plan, it's down to the business of making this house Work. That spruce is coming out, so that gives us a, more, uh, a better opportunity for, for car. We want to overemphasize that this is the front door, so lead everybody somehow in that direction. And you know what? I don't like when the driveway is your walkway. So we're going to have to have the walkway away from it down here. Try to have some central access for the walkway to have it more of a formal entrance. Right. Well, we've got a good footprint here to uh, 
start working on. It's going to take a lot of effort to pull this place together and get everyone to the front door. Plus, we're delivering on their requests for traditional, formal, and modern. Did we do it? We want to give two kind of walkways at the, at the entrance between the two trees. And so we're going to take that tree out and just do this curved kind of walkway. The way the path will work, it's kind of got a squared off design, so it's got a little bit of a contemporary edge to it. So when you come around, it says here, keep or remove the juniper. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know if, I can't, I don't know if it's going to go You can't let go of that, can you? you can't let, well, we both hate the juniper, so I think the juniper's going to go. Yeah. yeah. Unless, you know, Kennedy wants to strap himself to it or something and have a little <laughs> protest. But then we come down to the front. We're thinking of anchoring either side here with just two kind of formal trees. And this is to give a little bit of privacy. I can't wait for July to be sitting out there and enjoying the front front steps and the new garden. Let's keep our fingers crossed for that. Yeah, it's very exciting. The biggest challenge with this garden is going to be to make sure that the public knows this is a private garden and they feel like they have enough privacy and didn't open it up completely. And that's not going to be known till probably the bitter end when the plants go in. Enough with the talk. It's time for action. The landscaping is confusing, but it's also old. Nothing's worth saving right at the end of its lifespan. It's no wonder this walkway is such a trip hazard. First, it doesn't have a thick enough base. Hot and cold make it heave and crack. Then, to prevent weeds, the spaces between the stones are filled with mortar that cracks even easier. A disaster waiting to happen. When you yank mature, plant material out, it always gives a little bit of a shock value to everybody. You're 100% with the juniper coming down, right? The big one? Okay, it'll, yeah. be, it'll be gone today. And there's no going back. Once you do it, it's done. Jason and Greg have committed to losing the big juniper. It's a good warm-up for the main event. Removing the sick evergreen from the front lawn. Oh, yeah? To me, it says we've got an issue. Back to the drawing board. We call it an unexpected twist. Why does the tree have to stay now? The city won't let us take it down. They don't deem it that it's damaged enough or diseased enough that it's actually a problem. And we have to work with this tree being in, and hopefully there's enough space here in the parking area. So there's an opportunity to uh, maybe put a little bit more lawn in here. Yep. And have some sort of driveway edging, maybe, or just have plant material, maybe. I think it would look good if we banded it. Yeah, it makes would. it look a little more formal. That's right. But see ya. Bye. The resulting change to the driveway will see the edge banded by brick. Jason and Greg still get parking for two cars, and the tree is here to stay. The fact that we've been able to work that little parking spot around it actually works out really nicely. And, you know, when all's said and done, you don't want to take down such a big tree. It's been mm -hmm. here for, you know, since the 60s. So uh, we're actually really delighted with how that turned out. Great. Now to pick brick for the key walkway to the front of the house and pavers to ban the newly designed driveway. So the felt and brick pavers yeah. are all on this wall, right? right so you can use any of these ones, house brick or these in, in the ground. How do they get all the different color mixes, though? How do they get that happening? Pretty much, it's just, A, it's just they have different colored clays, and it's just mixing the different shales together to get into the particular blends that they have. We're looking for this type of style of heritage brick, and uh, because the house has that kind of age to it. Yeah, this is a really, really awesome one, because of the dark, you get black, sort of darker brick grays, you've got uh, orange, brown, and red. So all together, it's gets this beautiful blend. How much am I gonna get? Am I gonna get, like, 50% of this gray brick when I get a delivery, or is it gonna be, like, you know, mostly the red, or what's the what's the blend of percentages and color? Of the charcoal, it's probably in about that uh, seven to 10% that okay. you would get. The rest of it is gonna be that brown, right. mainly the brown with a little bit of the red that you see in there, in that particular one. Okay. Because that's actually kind of getting close to the flagstone color, so just right. to tie in with the flag a little bit and then into the brick of the house. Yeah, it's important that I think that the walkway at Greg and Jason doesn't necessarily have to match the house perfectly, totally. but it certainly has to complement yeah. it. Worth keeping in mind, you can't use just any type of brick for a walkway. House brick absorbs water and disintegrates quickly with temperature change. 
clay bricks, like these Belden pavers, have more give. They're made to expand and contract the temperature change. Enough of the new bricks are charcoal gray, so they'll match nicely with the flagstone steps we're putting in. Away from the noise and dust, I'm taking refuge in James's backyard. While we're at it, he can help lock a planting plan that freshens the look at the side and the front. On top of doing a walkway that says to everybody, go this way, the plants can also help kind of guide everybody to the front door. Yeah, hedging will work. I, I like it. It's got a certain elements of formality here. Maybe a, like a boxwood hedge or something. I mean, I've got them bordering here. Yeah. It just gives a little bit of higher formality, evergreen, because they want winter interest too. And it's also can, shade, right? They can handle, yeah. tolerate shade, so. Yep. Okay, so you come around the side. We have two focals that we want to do mm -hmm. here, just for interest for height. Coral bark maples. I'll tell you why they kind of work, because the backyard has got a little more natural feeling to it. So I think if you do kind of a formal setting with these two trees, but they're not typical formal trees, it's kind yeah. of a nice kind of twist on formality. So I'm thinking maybe in this area we start introducing maybe some ferns in here. That's a good call. You know, just here we're trying to transition from what they have to what we're kind of putting in. So Yeah, yeah. maybe some uh, Japanese beach fern or something like that. All right, great, we're done. Thanks for the help, man. While checking it out on site one last time, we found a way to save some money. Unbelievable. The coral bark maple behind all this plant that yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, right. We planted one in October. Did, did you guys do this? Yeah, we yeah, guys did. put it in it. You know, we might be able to transplant this with the bucket of the bobcat. As for the walkways and such, we're seeing lots of progress, and it looks awesome. Nice work, man. This looks good. Thanks, thanks. Hey, those We've steps are beauty, it. man. Like the homeowner said that they knew it was going to look good, but they had no idea it was going to look like how it did, how it does. When we were here, we were thinking about uh, how do we transition from the Belden to this existing flag? Yeah. You know, it was like it was going to be squared off just like this. Yeah. It was like, well, that kind of looks weird how you just end it. Now it yeah. looks totally natural ending. I mean, sometimes these things, once in a while, they work out. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't this look sad, man? Removing the huge juniper has given us 2020 hindsight. See, this is what happens, man. When they're all planted up against each other, I mean, they're nice and full. It's like a done garden, but when you try to renovate a garden, you pull one tree out, then it's like a snowball effect. Take the next one, take the next one out. Actually, this is probably where you stop, because the next one's planted a little bit further away. Yeah. That one's all right. I'll have to ask Jason and Greg about this. Let's go. Our mission, create a formal walkway that leads visitors to the front door and a parkside paradise. We gotta get to the front. Follow the yellow brick road. We've given the front of their place quite the haircut. It's a blank canvas. Now that they're gone, we just can't believe how much space there is to work with. But when you pull stuff out, something's gotta go in its place. This is the one that I want right here, man. Coral bark maple. Where are you using this one at Greg and Jason's? We're gonna actually use, we're gonna use two of them, but separated. They're gonna make a formal setting on the arc at Jason and Greg's house. Check out this, look at this. Look at the color of this bark. It's so spectacular. Incredible. You know, it gets so bright. It's so sunny in a sunny location. Like, it just has this vibrant kind of chartreuse green with this amazing red bark. You know, it's got to be a little bit of a sheltered location. Uh, as we know, it can get susceptible to Japanese maples frost damage. Like you see here, this black twig that probably dried out in the winter. So we'll just prune that off. A uh, spectacular choice, Kennedy. Unbelievable. The coral bark maple behind all this plant. This coral bark maple perfectly matches the one we found in the yard, right down to the size. Is that a Japanese beach fern? Yeah. And you know, you're not using ferns typically to be this like spectacular kind of look. They just yep. have this amazing mass quality to them. People think they have this delicate nature about them because they're soft and they're like in a forest setting and make the whole forest look nice, but they're so hardy, these plants. Oh, good call. I think that'll be a great filler. Love it. They really wanted low maintenance, Kennedy, and yeah. I really do think that hemocallus or daylily are some of the lowest maintenance perennial flower you can, you can have. 100% you're right. The flower is fantastic on them, but it's kind of short-lived. And again, you should be deadheading these every single time a flower is out. You just pick it off when yeah. the, like this, exactly. You can do that come right down to the base of it and just pinch it off because what that does is allow the energy to go into the new flowers. Oh. That's um, over there here. 
we're laying a pea gravel driveway for a welcoming approach and crunch underfoot, which reveals another change to plan. Guys, Greg and Jason requested to change this chain link. I'm glad. You know how we try to keep your eye inside the garden? Right. It kind of doesn't let it do that. And right here, the eye keeps going past the garden yeah. into the other the adjacent uh, gardens. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You're not nervous, are you? Come on. Not a bit. Something. Let's see. We'll take a side of fries and one new fence, please. Hold the ketchup. Very cool. Okay. Can I have my book back? Well, I think it'd be nice to pick up in the architecture of the house by not just having a basic square fence, maybe pick up on a little. Well, look at the arcs on the walkway too, right? Ties all oh, there you go. Together. Makes sense. Well, that's good. Now to find some real food. Now the plants and trees are going in, down to the wire. And James has arrived with more of the green stuff. Standards, and I thought maybe they could add a little to Greg and Jason's garden because they're upright. I think the front entrance needs a little. So I've been coaxing Kennedy about it. Hopefully he uses them. So I'm just dropping them off for him. Marlis are gentry, they're for another job, but I think they work well here. Let's see what Kennedy says. All right, so this is all gonna fill in a couple things. The uh, nine bark, we're gonna move it okay. away from the uh, Japanese maple because it was too cluttered in there. I'll just move it over to maybe where the cedars are over here. Yeah. There's one boxwood down at the other end, and we're gonna take it, put it on either side of the step, just to kind of balance the steps out a little bit. Oh yeah, James brought these things in, man. They're perfect. Yeah, this works out way better. It gives a little bit of height at the door. That's good. Here we go, nice, man. Here's the front yard. Take it in. You go that way. <laughs> I take the high road. I, I have take to the low road. Symmetrical. I'm well, Japanese difference. maple looks amazing. Clean, very clean. Hey, wait a second. I'm not being pulled to the other side to uh, <laughs> drop some pieces off. Where's the entrance? Door. Where's the front door? We are absolutely thrilled. But one of the highlights for sure for me is the way the path invites you off the street right up to the front door. It's a little bit of a journey. You're not exactly sure where you're going to end up, but you're really intrigued by all the focal points that you get along the way. And then by the time you get to the front door, it's just this wonderful little courtyard. It's almost as simple as that. Just give somebody an easy corridor to find the front door. Then as soon as you start adding these plants and kind of interesting things, it keeps your interest going and it just kind of guides you without you actually even knowing that's what it was doing. Every single plant that they wanted to remove or every single plant that they wanted to put in, he would talk to me about it and make sure that I was comfortable with it. So I, I really appreciated that. It made me feel like I was part of the process. The, the brick is such a nice, warm color. Um, and then the plants, there's, there's a lot of diversity in color that makes it really interesting, but at the same time, it's all very natural. And the fence worked out really well, considering it was such a quick sketch. Good call. I like how it steps from six, five, and four. Perfect. There was this big concern. We were going to get rid of the tree, and we were kind of stressed about getting rid of it. And when all said and done, the tree stayed. I love the fact that the tree stayed in, because to me, this has such a beautiful, symmetrical front entrance. I was so appreciative, really, that the plan, the landscaping plan, was able to work around it. I absolutely love the entrance, the two kind of walkways around the Japanese maple in the middle of the boxwood there. It just sets the tone for the whole entrance. Setting the tone for right at the sidewalk, where who these people are. And that's, I think that's what people hire us to do. So this beauty, integrated with the new, yep. the new and the old. Oh, so here you go, we got the front yard. So you're sitting on the new uh, staircase that we put in. The front entrance to the house has been completely transformed. It's now a space where we'll actually linger and hang out and socialize with our friends at the beginning of an evening, at the end of the evening. It's, it's like getting an extra room to the house. I was a bit nervous it was gonna to be too open, but because the park extends up the block a little bit more, it opened the park up even more to the front, front entrance here, so it, it worked really well. It's amazing, guys. When you go down into the park, looking back at this house, it has this estate kind of feeling to it. 
because these are traditional materials in the sense they match the architecture of the house, it almost feels as though this has always been here. He stayed, man. He's in still the same location, guarding the door. That was a little bit of a tradition in our garden that Woody was there, and he always watched over the garden. And Kennedy recognized that, and so he, he found a special place for him when they were finished with the garden. Do you guys want to check out the park? Hell yeah! Do I ever, man? I gotta do some cartwheels or something. You're gonna love this. We bought this house about 18 months ago, and um, it's a very modern house. The client has this uh, great big modern, well, postmodern, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but it has a, it's a great big cube. It's in the ground. It's made of concrete. It's got a few big windows. Just almost finished the renovation of the inside of the house, and so it was time to have a look at the garden and make that garden as nice as the house. The client's backyard, I have actually never seen anything like it attached to a house that is pretty well thought out architecturally, beautiful modern piece. Uh, you get to the backyard, it looks like, uh, I don't know, some dog's breakfast, some amoeba-shaped deck that somebody's idea of a garden design, I have no clue how they, they got to that point. There's actually a couple of dead trees in there, and so that's going to be a bit of a nightmare. I was attracted to James's work because it was a much more modern design aesthetic. The back is very, very long. We're just going to be dealing with the front half right off the back of the house. So it'll be interesting to find out how it's going to connect in with that natural backdrop for this uh, part of the yard. James, when you're off the phone, we'll talk yeah, about the time. Is it for 2 o'clock? Because I'm just yeah, going to talk okay, to myself. Yeah, okay, I had it down. I've been sitting here for an hour. Yeah, two, trying to talk to you. And I can't read your notes. Deck out, deck out. People but around. He, that's training in landscape architecture training. This looks that's like my doctor's prescription. Didn't uh, you learn how to write like this in landscape Viagra, architecture school? Cialis. Lauren's got to come up with a design that will take this dog's breakfast to best in show. Super, super. What does that say? Could you please decipher your... It says, opinion? this better be the best drawing you've ever done. <laughs> so they like to entertain, they like they to... They like to entertain, they want a main area. She basically wants a refuge from the storm. So we can do something really interesting. Yeah, in it. I think so. We've got a concrete deck here. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep it. There's an existing oh, railing yeah. here. Let's cut it off. Let's do something more modern. The stairs that lead down to the basement are rotten. They have old timbers in an lock. We're going to pull them out. All right. We can use some man made pavers yeah. that are, are That's modern. Unusual for, we haven't yeah. used that for a while. But there's yeah. some nice products now that, have a, that lend themselves to a contemporary yeah. effect. In fact, I don't think this house, if we put natural flags on it, might look too formal or traditional for that. It, it might look too much and you know what I told her there's no need need there's no reason to drive up budget just to use stone you can use man-made pavers it'll tie in with her or she's got a concrete facade on that house it'll tie in perfectly now it's up to Lauren to draw this thing what we're proposing is a more rectangular patio that's going to accommodate a dining area and a lounge area this is going to be an arbor and the intent is they're going to be able to place their dining room table under here but I'm doing now these little bars I'm drawing now are proposed screens that we're going to tie into the house. The two screens that are at the either end of the arbor, they're going to be a bright orange, while the others will be a clear, opaque white. That's right, orange. The inspiration for uh, this garden was actually this watch here. When we met with her, she said, I love your watch. We had both talked about um, our love of the color orange because I had commented on loving his watch. So he actually incorporated the color orange into the design. Brinley loves our design. I can't wait to see it done. So it's time to get started. So here it is, Jay. Jay is my contractor, and he'll be making this design jump right off the page. Plant material, the existing cedar hedge here. Don't worry about that, that's gone. Junipers, that's gone. The Euonymus uh, standard here, although it's quite a beauty, we're, we're gonna get rid of that too. This ancient uh, Euonymus sarcoxy, all of them, we're gonna keep them intact because they're gonna add a lot of uh, sort of greenery to, this, to the side. Uh. These plants will provide some definition behind our translucent screens. You can see this old stump here. Just grind it down. Grind I think it, it's, probably, yeah, it's probably rotten right through. And the good news is, two weeks ago, Brindley's neighbor's tree helped us with the demolition tree decides to fall on top of the deck. The furniture is done, the deck's done, and as you can see this Acer Nagundo is done, or Manitoba Maple. 
At first I thought it was a total disaster. Uh, the, tr the end result is I'm thrilled because I get to buy a homey patio set that goes with the style of the garden. It's an omen for Mother Nature, and I think that means we're on the right track. I'm totally thrilled to see the garden being demoed. Well, sort of thrilled. Turns out Brinley was thinking of replanting this Euonymus somewhere else. I'll get you a new uh, Euonymus. No problem. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> we got Zorro here. No, I know. It's my mistake, man. We're taking out the deck and the wooden stairs. We're also replacing the old stairs to the basement with concrete slabs. And how are we putting this yard back together again once everything's cleaned out? I just want to go over this planning plan before we uh, finalize it. It's, it's important that we have the layering effect to give the, some height on the edges here. I was thinking maybe hornbeam or something All longer. Right. Create a dense green wall behind mm -hmm. these screens. What you have proposed for in front of the, uh, the hornbeam hedges here? I thought we'd uh, have a nice combination of uh, Carex and a stilby. The Chinese a stilby, which is the lower one? Great, the pamela. Yeah, the pamela, which okay, is, good. Uh, and the great thing about Carex and a stilby is they'll tolerate shade. So the plants we've got under control, just where are we going to find orange screens? Look at all the colors, man. I can't believe it. I've got just the place, and I've got just the inspiration to go by. I'm looking right here right now, and I'm seeing number 303 here, and it kind of looks really... Uh, it's like a pumpkin orange. Yeah, pumpkin yeah. orange. Yeah, it's a great orange. Yeah, so that, that just pops. See, we're, we have this really modern arbor, very minimalist patio, and these two screens will flank a seating area, and it'll just give a great big punch of color to the garden. Is there anything they should know when they're using acrylics outside, say uh, uh, cleaning, anything like that? Yeah, like clean. That? Best, best way to clean it is you don't use any household products. Right. Soap and water is yeah. the best way. So hey, we're going in the back? Yeah, I'll show you in the back. So, you, so I should probably put my carbonate acrylic shield on? There you go. Perfect. You're not going to wear that, are you? <laughs> this is where we cut it the size, cut it the shape. This is where That's it incredible. Out. Just like the balls are doing here, this has all been done on our CNC. That's wild, man. That's a great thing with plastic. You can do any of it. Bend it, cut it, shape yeah. it. You can do whatever you want with it. Excellent. Yeah, here you go. Oh, there she is. So basically, you just get us uh, what size you want us to cut it to, and uh, we'll get it going for you. Beautiful, man. Yeah. Look at that. And that's uh, the exact oh, look at that color. Yeah, right beautiful. The same color. as the watch. Perfect. Beautiful, man. We've got our screens. And back at the site, the basement stairs are in, and the stump's coming out. Once the stump is gone, we can regrade the yard and start in on the patio. The other issue is, is one that's pressing are the stairs. The stairs I haven't ordered yet, and uh, one thing Brinley wants me to do immediately so it doesn't go beyond the end of the job are the stairs. We have to order them, and she would like wood instead of steel now, so I've got to figure out a design, which I've been putting off and putting off and putting off. I've got to get back and get these stairs ordered. Well, we need a modern design for a set of stairs. Oh, right. like a, a nice open, airy staircase, wooden, not metal, because she doesn't want metal anymore. Brinley's stairs are going to have stainless stringers supported by Brazilian Ipe treads. It's modern and works perfectly with her house. As for the plants, they've been delivered and Brinley likes a lot. So this is the variegated carex that we're planting on uh, both sides of, um, in front of the arbor. And this is the Estilbe Ardensi, which is uh, a really beautiful flower will come out of here, pink and white. There's two different colors here. These are French hybrid lilacs, so a beautiful mauve color that'll come out. Mm -hmm. um, this is Sure Spot Euonymus under here. Mm -hmm. It's got a really interesting variegated foliage here with the, this really creamy center. Mm -hmm. We've got a combination in here of daylily mixed with a geranium. They will naturally cascade over the edge to soften it up mm -hmm. and create the mm -hmm. foliage contrast with this nice spiky leaf. Well, the transformation of the garden is just incredible. I'm not sure if it's so much the planting as it is these vertical structures going in, but you can just begin to get a sense of how incredibly beautiful it's going to be. Now, how um, tall will these be, James? Is this the, yeah. the finished height? No, this looks a little strange right now. It's high, eight feet to finished height. So these will all be lopped off with right. a, we'll have a laser level. Okay. And we'll just lop them all perfectly off and put their cross beam in after mm -hmm. the screens have gone in. Dino 
my guys, holy crow. Look at the watch here, man. Exactly the same color. Pretty damn close. Yeah. What about the chairs in the dining room? Chairs in the dining room? The orange chairs. Are they orange too? Yeah. We meant to do that. Yeah. See, the indoors ties with the outdoors. Yeah. I'm really blown away with it because of the, it's just an icy blue and it even ties in with the patio. Mm -hmm. And uh, the orange is a complimentary color. I, I love, love it. Orange yeah. And bluish gray yeah, together. it's so beautiful. Oh, so I'm really excited. Until a phone call the very next day. Brinley, how are you? Brinley just loves the orange screens, but they have her husband seeing red. See? Give it a week, you'll get used to it. You no, know he wants it changed. That's the whole highlight of the whole. Yeah. It was based on that orange color. Was a pretty strong color for people. It was people. really strong. Wow. I think they look awesome. Would you be willing to go with a more subdued oh, color? Yeah. Oh, I still want orange. Oh, you still want orange. Oh, you do oh we still want, want orange. Oh, yeah, 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 guys. Don't get me wrong. We just want a different tone. You sure about changing this, man? This looks amazing. What is it? The blue and the orange is the complementary colors? They are. They are, and they're gorgeous together. So we love it. Uh, let's change it. <laughs> <laughs> you win some, you lose some. But my bets are paying off with the stainless guy who has come to build our stairs. And we have a simple solution for the screens. Sometimes, you know, you get a, a color sheet up there, and all of a sudden it's way too bright or way too intense. If you put the frosted in front of it, you'll tone right. it down. You could put a white backing on it, so if you want to cut the light transmission through it, this will become... Right. Even more opaque. We sent Brinley and her husband to pick out something to make the screens less out there. What we're going to do is we're going to put this in front of the orange to tone down that brilliant sort of the color of my watch effect. OK, so we go from light to dark. It's red now. I, I, I like it a lot. The color of the screen went from that orange, the color of the watch and this glass sort of thing, to uh, mm, the color of the fire red. red. Yeah. I like it a lot, actually. So it went from, you know a blood tangerine? orange? Yeah. You went from mandarin to a blood orange. Our stair guy, Mike, is on Brinley's case. Hey, James, how are you? Good. Because that, that concrete pad is like sunken mm -hmm. right in the middle, I was just concerned about the elevations of each tying in. So level. you don't want it to slope around the deck? No, I, I, I was just okay. wondering, man. Yeah, here, actually, I'll show you what I did. Yeah. I went with my uh, laser, and then yeah. I, I did measurements at all the posts. So you've got a contour elevation map. Uh, they're tough concrete See every deck. post, eh? Minus 5 yeah. sixteenths, plus 5 eighths. Wow, that's great. Yeah, it'll be a little nice. higher than 42 in certain sections, but. Totally fine. Yeah, yeah as long as it's a nice straight top rail. Looks smooth. It's going to be really stealth. It's going to be awesome. Well, she'll like it. Oh, she'll love it. She'll love it. Now, if we can just get the railings installed within the next week, we'll be golden. The railings will be installed this week. He's Come good. He's back. really good. You know, he's got a cute dog, too. He has a cute dog? Yeah, he's got I'll a cute little you. dog. <laughs> but this big. Well, the problem right now is we made this section here a little shorter. So I have to take that one back to the shop and have the dimension wrong. Just yeah. the railing and the staircase, Done. right? Yep. Finally, out with the temporary stairs and in with the stainless steel. As Jay installs the Ipe wood under these stealth stairs, we're still on the waiting list for the glass inserts for the railings. What's up? These inserts have to go in. For Brinley, it's becoming an insurance issue. Brinley's waited enough. She's patient enough. I want it done by Friday. In the meantime, we're going to put wood up to appease the insurance company. But I tell you, when that glass finally arrives, this yard is going to look spectacular. We'll just have to wait a few months to see it. Although Brinley's already bought her dream backyard furniture, our stylist Lisa is going to help us push her yard past the finish line. The entrance is uh, <laughs> a 
perfectly in tune to keep people. Oh, James, I love these panels. Yeah, I love them too. You've got a little bit of a sort of a heavy over here on the heavy lines, the straight lines, and then the back, it's more natural. It's a natural setting. So I think we could maybe soften it a little bit. You have these two great areas. I want to create some kind of flow between them, some kind of unity. And in terms of furnishings, I think a good idea to break away from that and soften things up a little great. bit. Otherwise, it looks all too similar. Yeah, it's gonna be dynamite. It's gonna be great. Yeah. I hope Brinley likes it. This is the exact color, I think. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm actually thinking maybe this will soften up the space on the concrete floor on the deck. Wow. This is a cavern. I still haven't cleaned those things. I love it. Whoa. It's such an extension of the house. They walk down to this concrete deck which, uh, you know, we didn't veneer in the end. We didn't put stonework on it. We, we kept it the way it is. Out of these Ipe stairs, inviting you down to the lower patio. So we regained this entire space, creating this incredible flow through from the house to the garden. James did what he promised me he would, and that is, he said, I'm gonna make your garden every bit as beautiful as the interior of the house. Mike did a fantastic job yeah, here. It's very yeah. simple, but yeah, yeah, Mike did a fantastic job. I, you know, I know I, I started with like, <laughs> where's Mike, come on, get to the job site. But in be all and end all, at the end of this whole deal, it's uh, it's stunning and I'm really happy for uh, I guess Bryn that patience got this. is a virtue. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I've especially enjoyed the panels because they're incredibly beautiful in all seasons. See how the leaves are pushing against the glass? Look, yeah. yeah. It, it looks like a painting, doesn't it? It totally. looks like a painting. When you see the light coming through it and the tree behind, I really love that because that to me makes it a garden that I can enjoy at three in the morning, in January, in June, whenever. The panels you could easily unclip and you can put a blue one in tomorrow if you want. You could actually have a collection of three or four panels uh, depending on your mood or depending on the season and uh, change them up. Even though the orange became rust, I'm still happy with it. I like yeah, it. I love it too. The way it ties in with the pillows and everything. It's very, That's very cool. A lot of the plants are chosen surely out of the fact that they're low maintenance. You know, they're not gardeners. They, they want something low maintenance. They go away on the weekends. The Carex grass and the astilbe flanking the bottoms of the arbor, and what they'll do is they'll blend together and create a really beautiful texture change. We're not having a little collection of everything here. We're just having different foliages that will, will just sort of play off one another. Because the patio is so big, it seems like the arbor kind of still breaks it up a little bit. Lovely. Well, it shows that you really have to beef up an arbor for this scale uh, by making it six by six rather than four by five. I agree. Remember when it was here, Lauren? Like, the, this that's amoeba amazing. depth yeah, that's <laughs> rotten, sort of yeah. the grand panel-shaped deck no that was all way. rotten. Oh, yeah. If you look at the before pictures of our garden, it's hard to compare that to the incredibly gorgeous garden we have now. Definitely, this is more our style. The whole intent of this was to have a lounge and dining area uh, adjoining each other, so it became a really an outdoor living space with these uh, walls, making it feel cozy. I can't even well, imagine it. actually having a party in a space like this. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, I can't can imagine it, but <laughs> I, I can't like now. I know. Can't we have a crantine here or something so now? awesome. It's like that open concept kitchen. And, and you know, you'll have a, always be at a party and no one will leave the kitchen. Well, that's the sort of the feeling I think this big patio is going to create. My relationship with the garden has really changed since it's been renovated. Now it's just an unremitting pleasure to look at it and to be in the garden. The kids love being out here and playing and we're eating outside a lot more. It's become a much better relationship. I've never worked with a client who has such positive energy. I just felt so awesome when this job was done for a place for her to just hang out and relax and that was the ultimate sort of goal. All my jobs, I want them to be this way. He's strong. Project He's also. wacky. He's James the landscape designer. Join him as he pours yeah, his heart into transforming Michael's dreary front yard into a beautiful destination for pedestrians and cars alike. Nice, man. What nice a walkway. Uh, oh, a hedge. That's interesting. Uh, this is weird. Uh, this is embarrassing. Oh, great meeting, great start. <laughs> Off to a great start here. 
This must be the door. James Dale. Michael, how Michael, are you? Michael, pleasure to meet you. Well, pleasure we're off to a great you. start here. I, uh, I was knocking on your front door, I thought. That used to be the front door. It did? About it, uh, 50 years ago. As I'm finding out right now. Michael, one of the first issues I'm going to tackle, I think, right away is uh, your identity crisis with the front entrance of this home. You can't tell that the side entrance is the main entrance, so we really have to uh, drum it up and create a visual interest from the street and the driveway. It's a little narrow. It the is. Walkway. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should probably widen that. <laughs> in essence, Michael, what are we looking for in the front yard? Number one, uh, we need to have parking, Re retain some parking. The front driveway it leads into this great big open parking lot in front of this beautiful old majestic home, but it's this, this, this newer interlock which somebody just haphazardly threw down. Number two, these little shrubs at the front have got to go. It's in public see oncoming traffic, so we okay. need to have a little bit of a, a better sight line. Okay. Thirdly, we need to have uh, an attractive entrance to the house. Currently, it's not. Well, in the summer, um, you can't see the front of the house. It's a nice old house, and we'd like it to be more visible. These two trees probably have to go. Clearing the trees will open this beautiful home to the street. It's a touchy subject, but it's something I want to address well, right away. It's, uh, it is touchy. And yeah. I think I'll get over the uh, the loss, but it would be good to replace them with something uh, absolutely um, more appropriate yeah. for the house and the neighborhood. It's a, a very old house, and it's had numerous renovations and add-ons. With all the work Michael's done to the inside of the house, I've got one very important question. Is there a budget left for landscaping? Maybe 50, 60 bucks. Okay. I think I've met my match. You know, I'm, I'm usually the guy who jokes around a lot. I'm getting nervous in front of him. I actually like him so much that I feel like I've known him for a long time. I think we're going to get along really well. Did so. you just call me a mushroom? Michael, give me a hug. Thank you. Back at Dirty Business headquarters, we're brainstorming how to best serve Michael's needs. At the same time, we're dealing with the number one no-no to anyone who's creative. <laughs> Lower budget. Uh, Keep no the budget money. down. So let's get to it! Looks like the front yard's been hijacked by parking a little bit. Yeah, for, they want to have parking in the front right. and have a, cars go by as well. I think you should well. tell them they can't. So they want parking for two, one, two, or three cars. Two, two cars? Two cars, yeah. So, Lauren, this brick, uh, I know it's not happening for you. It definitely not happened no. for me. It's like a strip mall or yeah. something. So, and there's this uh, sort of ratty looking shrub across the front. Besides adding car parking here, it'd be, it'd be nice to have an, a little bit of a pedestrian entrance. Everybody's walking up this driveway. How many times have we designed a home that you're walking up the driveway? You don't want to walk up a driveway. Hey, I'm home. Can that all be cleared out? Clear it Open out. it up. Can you get access going on the other? You know how we try to look at things different, like the driveway's right. up yeah. here and the access comes in over here? That's not a bad idea, I don't bad think. Idea, to actually. use the front yard a little bit better. But this looks like this used to be the main door, huh? Well, look so. at me, I'm standing in the garden. Yeah. But so this, get out of there. This used to be actually. The, this used to be the walkway. There. They want to have a better front entrance. There's nothing really working here, is there? I mean, no, this wall really. was built at one point, this, this was built at another time, and then this was yep. thrown in. So no thought was really put into the design of this front entrance. Armed with measurements and a sense of purpose, I'm ready to tackle this design. There was uh, as a certain look, and we've got to sort of fit this uh, front entrance, uh, make it appealing. Right. Make and it fit into the neighborhood, too. And we want to take away some vegetation, I think, and then add some more that will uh, be more attractive to the house rather than yeah. hide the house. And often, of course, we're reluctant to take a, a mature tree out, but it's in the way of, of, of parking, and that's really one of the goals of, of Michael here. So They want cars to be able to park, but also get out of the way. If there are two cars, maybe can get out of the way, they can park, pull one up, and we're going to do it in gravel. Or... Gravel really gives a more uh, yeah. um, a romantic feel to the it garden. Does, yeah. It would be best to have a brick driveway and a gravel parking pad off to the side. It's cost effective, it's right. environmentally sound, it has a romantic feel. The old red brick, the gravel will go beautifully with that. Good luck, Jane. All right, buddy. See ya. Thanks, Lauren. You're welcome. I'm going to give Michael's property a complete drawing board makeover. My aim is to make a beautiful yard despite having to accommodate a landscaper's worst enemy, the car. So the most important part of this design of Michael is, is creating an entrance way that extends from the street right around, walkway breaking in, wrapping around, and directing the visitors or the mailman or whoever's coming over to the side of the house. The design seems to deal with all the issues uh, that we were concerned about. That's great because the mailman's been complaining. I've delineated this main area with four main trees, smaller ornamental trees, but then as, uh, as you open the door, there's gonna be a focal screen as a backdrop. And Michael, that space there we're looking at what we want to do is a focal tree right in the middle of the brick area. What kind of a tree is that going to be? I'm not sure yet, Michael. It's going to be an ornamental, something small. We want the tree to complement the house. 
not obscure it. My design is going to tie in a pedestrian flow separate from the, the car entrance. Michael likes the plan, so it's time to get to work. Before we can bring in our construction crew, we've got to get rid of those pesky trees. Certain trees do require a permit for removal. Basically, we measure the trees, measure the diameter at, at uh, chest height, make sure it's under 30 centimeters. If it's under 30 centimeters, it's not protected by the tree bylaw. We never remove trees without replacements in mind, and that's what we have for Michael's property. His house is looking brighter already. Of course, when things are going smoothly, that's when a problem rears its ugly head. Lesson number one, don't go off a property survey from uh, the early 1900s. I'm scared of court. I'm sc I just want to make pretty gardens, man. It really sucks when you make a pretty garden on the wrong property. And now that the trees are gone, we can get down to business and tear up this mismatched old yard. While the fellas tear up the site, I've had a chance to compare our design plan with the old property survey. There could be an issue. We've got a bit of a discrepancy between the property uh, map that I've had and the neighbor. Apparently we've gone onto their property and, and kind of taken out a few of their perennials. It's always best to review the basics of property lines and old site plans. I've invited my friend Tom, a professional land surveyor, to the office for some 411. Tom, when's a good time to call a land surveyor? As soon as you get something like this. Yeah, I'm, I've been working off a 120-year-old survey. It's not going to help you very much. When it comes to property lines, you want to be very diplomatic. Uh, if, you, if there's any signs of aggressiveness or you know any sort of, you're taking it lightly, it, it's going to end up in a court battle, and you don't want that. After you've got all your design and everything done, you're down into the construction phase. Now, that's another time you might want to think about calling a surveyor. If it's not clear where the boundary line is, if there's no markers in the ground, mm -hmm. and you're going to be working adjacent to a property line, it's best to have that line marked out clearly so there's no question, and you know you're working within you know, your client's property. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think most people make the uh, mistaken assumption is, is that they actually their property goes out to the sidewalk. The city actually owns 10 to 15 feet back from the edge of the sidewalk is part of what they call the road allowance, or the municipal boulevard area. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, of course, is when you're working up against a, a property line, which is abutting a neighbor, mm -hmm. you always really want to make sure you have a, a little talk with the neighbor first to make sure that you're both in agreement as to that everybody I knows agree. where the line is. So I just got to be very diplomatic and make this thing work and make everybody happy. You know what? I've made amends with the neighbor, and we're going to help her out with a nice new little perennial garden when we're done. Speaking of gardens, it's time to work out a planting plan for Michael's front yard and side entrance. I'm going to eat my puffs while we're doing this, if that's okay. This is healthy, good that's for you. Good. I think the planting plan is going to be the most important part of this whole design. What are you thinking? I'd love to put in, you know, I'm thinking about a river birch or a, a canoe paper bark birch because mm -hmm. it's so dark on the facade of that wall. So what I want to do is put a tree in there that's going to be sort of illuminate the area and, and sort of pop off the wall. I love it. This planting must be able to break up this little parking area with the walkway. Yep. So I think the best thing to do is to use dwarf Korean lilac. People love dwarf Korean lilac at their front yard because yeah. when you're entering a house and guests are coming over, you get that beautiful fragrant flower it's that really lasts longer than other yeah. flowers, which is great. Over to this quad, I call this the quad area. I really want to use, to tie in with this beautiful hedge, yeah. dwarf cream and lilacs, but in standard form. They're, they're sort of a very, very uh, a regal looking plant. Anything standard uh, shows, the, shows people that you have arrived, and they're used in historical landscapes, and, and that's why I want to use them. This house is over 100, probably 130 years old, so that's, uh, I thought it was appropriate. Evergreen, four seasons of interest. As you know, evergreens, the more evergreens you use, the less maintenance your garden's gonna be. Yeah, I love you. I love working with you. All right, let's go. Let's get the hell out of here. When prepping a base for laying brick on the ground, a pad of four to six inches of gravel is perfect for pedestrian walkways. A pad of six to eight inches is minimum for laneways expected to accommodate cars and trucks. Things have gone pretty well so far. Um, the changes are significant, as you can see. One thing I really was surprised is how intricate the work is and how talented the crew is in actually placing the bricks. I'm glad Michael thinks so. But we've hit a bit of a snag. Uh, well, we're laying the pad, which is herringbone, and uh, we messed it up a little. It was starting to get a little twisted, so we, uh, we've decided just to move it up to our square line and start over. This is a good one, all square, and then, then you get a brick like this. That's a... Uh, <laughs> not quite made properly, and then that, that would just mess your pad up pretty bad. 
Well, the bricks are a perfect choice for that. I, I'm, oh, it works you know, perfectly with that. I got a historical background. I want to tie in a historical home with, with appropriate landscape. Originally, Michael wanted to keep the uh, existing Credit Valley stoop that walk, right. when you walk in the house, but I, I said to him, you know, you are landscaping the whole property. I think we should remove this and, and uh, tune it up a bit. So we got to choose a new stone. Uh, I'm looking for a coping stone now for a client who has a really old established home in a uh, beautiful old neighborhood. So um, I'm not sure what I want yet, but uh, something more traditional, uh, chiseled face, you know, it'll tie in with the old home. We have a few different choices. We have the wire tin, chiseled face. Right. So you see how the chiseled face there is what you're talking about when yeah. you overhang the uh, toe edge of a stair. This darker color would match yeah, beautiful. the house beautifully, don't you think? And that's a local stone, isn't yes. it? Yes. So that's kind of cool to use local stone. But I really love the, the rough texture of it rather than the smooth finish. This is beautiful too, but... I do too. And I like the fact that water will sit in the grooves. Deepens the color when it's uh, wet. That's it. So if you put a sealer on it, that's the type of seal mm -hmm. color you would get. When it rains and, and you have these beautiful little puddles forming and you see the birds dancing in there. Pretend in, we're sparrows. In, <laughs> and they're drinking from the little in the puddles. Cat. We put a lot of care into sourcing the stone because it's easy to spoil a great design with inappropriate material. Perfect timing. Tapping at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Were you trying to get my attention or was that just... No. He's one of the funniest customers I've yeah. ever worked with. The uh, transitioning uh, between the, the driveway bricks and the, uh, the gray bricks and the red uh, walkway bricks is, is excellent. It's seamless. The two different colors also help define the walkway as a separate path from the driveway. Seeing all this great work happen to Michael's yard gets me so pumped up. Nice. <laughs> We're trying to delineate the two properties. It's pretty close together, the property line issue there. Well, we want to put on a row of beautiful beach, and the beach hedging is the way to go. They're the most elegant hedge you can actually have in a garden. That's my opinion. Winter interest, and this is one of the main important things that we have in northern gardens. We need winter interest. The, the leaves stick on throughout the winter, and you've got that toasty brown foliage. When we tell this to clients, sometimes they don't believe you. And here we are in spring, and these leaves are still on from last fall. The old leaves are pushed out by the new growth, but you can see, depending on the variety, they do it at different times. These can grow to 200 feet over a few lifetimes, but not to worry in our lifetime. But what I love them Why about is that? Be because you're never going to reach oh, that. Because we'll be dead. We'll be dead. But if you plant these right next to each other and you prune them properly, you can cut them off and just shear them every spring, you're going to have an incredible backdrop hedge, perhaps. Here's a little clump of birches. These are beautiful paper bark birches. Oh, what are they called paper bark? Black bark. Well, these Black are, birch. yeah, these are Betula nigra, right. which are um, river birch. Right. So, um, with this exfoliating bark, people, oh, is my tree diseased? I mean, there are a lot of trees that exfoliate like this. You don't peel it off. Pulling off the bark is a no-no. It exposes your trees to the environment and disease. The great thing about these is that they're light in color because the house is fairly dark, so they contrast beautifully. And I think also uh, at nighttime when these are lit up, they would look absolutely spectacular. The, the black trimmed house, it's very dark, as we say, this will pop. And I think we should use one, not three. You know, generally you use three clumpings. I think one is good enough. I agree. Local. Yeah, and I think the multi choosing a multi-stand one is nice too. It just uh, adds a little bit more drama, some oh, interest. And, and uh, you know, they all have friends all. It's gonna be there for eternity, so you know, they can all be with each other. This is called the London Plane Tree. And right now, it, it looks kind of plain, but it's not a plain tree. Yeah, it's not a plain tree at all. This is, a, this is an immature one. I mean, you know, it's a 40 millimeter standard size, and uh, it's one size we always plant. But as this tree gets older, Lauren, as you know, man, the bark it almost looks like a right. paint by number set. Yeah, and it goes from brown to greens to, to all the colors of a camouflage. It's a beautiful tree. You can see it's starting to exfoliate a little bit. Old traditional tree for an old traditional neighborhood. Let's get these plants over to Michael's and into position. This one, I wanted to mimic the neighbors. That's why I chose it. You can see young and old, just two doors down. This is where the design really comes together. Even though the plants and trees are relatively young, they bring the entire property to life. 15, 16. Michael was saying that he's got way too many rotten stumps and trunks and old fencing, so what did I do? I went and got some Boston Ivy. What Boston Ivy does is gonna cover everything. So, goodbye stumps. Our planting plan is never so rigid that we can't improvise on the day and change the placement on site. Plus, it makes me feel important to boss the plants around. 
when that verge comes in, it's going to pop. It's going to come to come alive here. That is, if it ever gets here. Yeah, I'm so upset that that verge isn't here today. I'd love to see it in place. I hope the tree gets here before I show the project to Michael and the guys. <laughs> well, we've relayed the bricks, we replanted the neighbor's yard, and guess what? The birch is here, so our problems have been dealt with. We're golden. We took out two trees here, but we put this one back, and it's a lot more airy and light. It brings life to this house. This, light, this house had way too much void brick in the front. It's too dark. Now this pops out and makes it uh, look awesome. Ah, the pea gravel is being spread like icing on a cake. A few more touches to ensure the plants are healthy, and I'm pumped to show the boys this dramatic transformation. Hey, oh, there's one left, look. Ah. You know, James, I don't even recognize it. This is the same house. <laughs> nice, man. What nice, a man. walkway. It's quite, a, quite a transition, isn't it? I love this. Not up the middle, like swing out around the side. It's wicked. The house was so dark and foreboding before. Now it's really opened up. It's beautiful. There were some mature trees. We were a bit ambivalent about removing them. Seeing what's, what's been done and adding the paper birch, I think, is a, a huge improvement. I have a little bit of a history background, so it sort of came out when I was designing this garden. You know, I use the heritage brick and some of the more traditional planting, like the peonies and the evergreen yew hedge. We use the hedgerows of dwarf green lilac, the beech hedging, which you see in England quite often. You really want to go down the walkway. Like, it's like, wow, this is a fun kind of feeling to Absolutely. walk through the garden and you get to the front. One of the goals we've achieved here is that we've diverted pedestrian flow around to the proper main entrance to the home. You think the pizza guys and mailmen will know now not to go <laughs> to the uh, front door? Since the landscaping's been done, there hasn't been any more papers delivered there, and no one's been walking into the glass. Uh, it's really made a big difference for us. There are going to be cars parked here, so even more so you want to use this path. For me, the, it's the pea gravel. I just yeah. feel like I'm in this beautiful Euro garden. I wanted an area where the car could park, but when the car was gone, it would look like a beautiful sort of a, a park-like setting. It really has changed the way the house looks uh, significantly. It's given it unexpectedly a sense of much more space. The curves and everything is really blends in with the house. It makes the house look really uh, extraordinary. Calm in here. So nice. Isn't it gorgeous, man? Well, we're standing in, uh, at the front of the house now, and it's changed incredibly. It's a pleasure, actually, uh, to come home and see it. One of the main problems with this house is that it has had no identity for the last 50 years. People have been walking up a driveway. We've used the materials, uh, the flow, the geometry to tie the history of the home and the garden together. This is an intersection. Of course. It's an intersection to the front door, to the front garden, to the back garden. It designates you have arrived at an entrance. The landscaping uh, has given the house a whole new complexion. We see it now as a much more inviting place. It seems to fit better into the neighborhood. Expectations were exceeded. We, we couldn't be happier with the outcome. Should we play Nicky Nicky Ninder? See ya. Anybody home? Oh my God. <laughs> Get out. Which way do we go? Buddy, what are you doing, man? My name is Joel. I'm a landscape designer. I believed it for a while. Every Monday, my partners and I get together at the office to share a quick breakfast. Have an egg. No, I'll wait. And go over the client lineup. Bowers, there's, are they still? Bowers has to start this week or we're going to get yelled at. The landscaping is so bad that we really want to update it in the driveway. The bushes that are there now are probably about 30 or 40 years old and are very tired. Now, I'd like to say we're on schedule to fix this yard, but our office manager, Deb, has gone on vacation. Is the schedule thing you? Yeah, let me just check. Just check this. Where is the schedule? I don't know. It's only the most important thing ever in this company. Look at that, the doors are all locked. They seem to listen to what we wanted, and that's important. And any time you're doing a work with some professional, they have to learn to listen to the client. Are these the keys? Do you have a copy of the schedule, Kennedy? No. Uh, no, I have absolutely no apprehension. I that. think next year we're vacationing all at the same time. As long as the work goes smoothly, and I'm hoping it will, this will be uh, simple, I'm sure. 
Hey, no schedule. So you guys have in your head generally when the schedule of the yeah. At worst comes to worst, you have to wait till Deborah's return, right? Well, here's the schedule. Yeah. We're booked solid and we're behind a little bit. Well, it's another beautiful start to a project. The Bowers are trying to incorporate a traditional style mixed with a bit of a formal feeling, which works with the architecture of their house. Just last year, finished doing a significant major, we call it a deep cosmetic job in the interior of the house. The Bowers seem to like straight lines and symmetry. So we'll extend that look to the outside. You know, this is a great clean uh, front yard. Looks amazing. I'm looking forward to showing it to you. Three things we're trying to achieve with the Bauer residence is a new front landing, sculpted planting, and a smaller driveway, making room for that planting. We have a green light for the front, and it's quickly approaching, so uh, it's a good time to... And one of the reasons we wanted this meeting today is we have uh, uh, some things that we think, some concepts that we want to change. Just not, not, sure. not large aspects of it, but planting and maybe a few other things or things that we want to see if we can incorporate. When a client is that detailed, it can sometimes be a concern. The stone border is... Natural stone. Just lays on it. Right. Most of our things dry laid. Yeah. You, if you did a concrete base okay. in our climate there's room for it to heave shift and crack. You always have that nervousness that you won't be able to do the job the way you're supposed to be doing it without interference. With regard to the construction of the porch yep. and the steps, what's the foundation? The concrete the... pour on sauna tube, so. concrete footings. Yeah. Grass is always difficult, I assume, to grow under the maple, the maple tree. tree. Maples are notorious for shallow roots, so the roots are really close to the, to the surface, and so it might be a little bit challenging to plant in there because yeah. of that root structure. Yeah. And then there's, of course, the hydro pool. The focal point in your garden besides the maple tree is the hydro pool. So once everything else is going on, you won't even yeah. notice yeah. it so much. Yeah. It's going to be softened with some plant material against the curb, but there's no sidewalks in this neighborhood. You guys are elevated on your landing, and we talked about the idea when you look out, we don't want you to see cars going by and asphalt. The idea that this would be a, a nice row of uh, columnar trees. To uh, break up the boundary with the neighbor. Yeah. yeah, should really help to define the space. This should be a happy process. It should be a positive process. It shouldn't be filled with too much pain. It looks good in drawings and it looks good in our heads, but until you actually start doing it, we'll see. Mm. More eggs. I just tried to admit the plastic. Eggs. Hello! Kennedy. Oh! Ron is our general contractor, and he'll be handling the Bowers job. I need him to check out the front steps, and if the base is in good enough shape, we can use it and save the client $5,000. It was poorly done. Like, the, the stonework's chick crap. It doesn't look like it's all cracked up or anything. I'll let you make the call. foundation might be... Well, we'll take it down to see. So why dabble in conjecture? Let's get Ron down to Richard's place and have a look at those dodgy steps. Uh, it's not solid underneath here, so we got a concrete pour on top of the old existing wall. Yes. For me, that's good. I was worried it was solid. Well, it's not really good because we were hoping <laughs> we could salvage right. and build up on top of existing. So, uh, as it is right now, we're going to have to keep on tearing it down. The bad news is the steps have to be completely torn out. The good news is we can save the retaining wall. So, goodbye steps. Goodbye, old bushes. And hello, new limestone. Ooh, that ain't right. It's just an old machine and uh, there's too much weight on the skid. This is not how you want to start a project. So I'm on my way to the Bowers residence and uh, I'm really excited that it's finally getting started. Unfortunately, the excitement is short-lived. Let's see if someone slightly heavier has better luck. Well, what do you know? James and I go over the project details one more time. Coming along? Yeah. Hmm. And find something... That just caught my eye. That could be funny? I've never uh, oh, seen the likes of uh, two of those together like that. Anyway. Anyhow. Okay, so uh, <laughs> over here. Pipe fittings that look suspiciously like... It's the landscaping show with balls. The roots underneath this maple are a little 
much more serious than we were expecting. Yeah, for sure they are. They're always are. urban street trees, especially Norway maples. They are the bane of any garden design installation you do because of the shallow roots on them. The good thing is, I guess we've been down the road with it enough that we do know some viburnums and dogwoods and oh, ground well. cover will yeah. go. Well, we can deal with the old maple's roots, but the old driveway's gotta go. We're going to dry lay a limestone border in the walkway to the front door. And now that the hardscaping's underway, it's time to think of the softscaping, also known as the plants and the trees. Oh, Japanese pagoda tree. Well, it's well, overwhelming. It's a large place and there's lots of plants. They've so, got a lot of nice specimens here, but we don't know what they are. And that's where I come in. Oh, yeah. Hi. How are you? Fine. How are you? Good. These are absolutely beautiful. Eastern red bud, Circus canadensis. They have the multi-stem, which I love because it has a, it looks absolutely dynamite uplit. This Circus. is for what area? I would use these as the four. When you step out your door, they'd look absolutely amazing. They're already about uh, eight feet eight feet tall. It's your house. If you feel like that's a little too heavy or too much, we'll tone it down. Yeah, I think it's a bit big. Okay. In this industry of landscape design, you could just be doing plant material design alone. You have to consider so many things. Light, sun, shade, structure, flower, how it's going to look after one year, how it's going to look after five years, how it's going to look after 60 years. These dogwoods would be a great option. And these are the fall leaves color. That's right. Yeah, well, Maybe we're making headway. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks good. Is this one good or That's no? a great one. The Bowers want a row of trees at the edge of their property to define the space. I'm thinking hornbeam. This is a hornbeam. This is columnar. You can see by that nice shape. That's why we want it. It's not going to overwhelm your property right. or the neighbor's property. The leaf stays on in the winter. So it has some nice winter appeal. Falls off in the spring or it just falls off in the spring and new leaves come out. Sadly, this batch is already sold. I put a phone call in to the grower and they are hopeful that they can get more. Now the fact that the client has been out here, it makes me feel great. Because I don't have to worry that when the plant material does show up, they're not going to like it. Another meeting and more breakfast. Toast, toast, Hi, toast. Bowers Hi. is... Uh, Moving along, we had went out to the grower with them last week. Very particular, which is great. Found some nice specimens. Still have to have another meeting with them regarding the shrubs and perennials. With the Bowers, they are right on it. They want to know what's going on. And they uh, just are very, very detail-oriented people. Now, we've got to find something to fill them with. We were thinking that the dwarf Korean lilacs would look really sharp on the left-hand side of the stairs as you're leaving the house. Okay. We like putting it by a front doorstep because it is so fragrant. Out of 100 species of shrub, there's really only five to seven that will grow fairly well underneath the maple. This viburnum judii is actually really quite fragrant for their flower. And this is, and this this is the fall, fall color. Fall. It's a dynamite red fall color. From the street, I wanted the, the porch and the doorway to be the focus point. You know, we don't want that to be lost. And the planters with on the too porch. Tall of a right. planting there. If you want to leave it as a semi ground cover, I'm completely fine with that. Okay. So I'm just trying to factor in, like why I should pick one or the other, the ground cover versus the bush. What I look for in our climate is because we spend so many months with uh, where I don't want you just looking at dirt, uh, is I look for winter interest. And the ground cover is great for winter interest. It, st it stays green. Right. And the viburnums, they still have winter interest in that they're a nice woody shrub. So uh, you're not looking at dirt. I think this calls for a compromise. We're going to plant the Euonymus coloratus and the viburnum, and they'll both look great year-round. But our planting plan may have a hitch. What do you need, buddy? I need to know, uh, there's two things. I'm both your orders for Joel and uh, James. Dwarf Korean lilac 
do not look good, so we're not gonna ship the ones we have. Oh, great. I need dwarf Korean lilacs. And I need viburnums. We might have to go elsewhere. If you want them that bad, or we'll try to get some other uh, kind. They're not gonna be the prettiest. Are they gonna be fine in the spring? Are they gonna be fine in the spring? Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll take I'll take eight. Right, I'll take my regular order. I'll take my regular order. Okay, so that's two regular orders. Uh, do you guys want fries with that? <laughs> <laughs> You're turning comical, buddy. We averted disaster on the first phone call, but the second one is another matter. Uh, okay. What? Um, not happy? I'm not happy with the landing area. It dips and it's up and it's down, so I'm a little, um, um, disappointed. The thing that makes everything okay with this guy is he's a really nice guy. In between the rebar steak and the gas can, it has a slight twist in it, but they're not in their final resting position, so that's why it might look a little shifted or twisted. He wanted this tread um, made a little bit uh, more level. I'm going to be seeing it every day, and uh, I have a, a very critical eye, and, and uh, if something's off, that will bother me and would have to be corrected, so might as well do it now. Basically, it's a pain in the butt to change, but if they want to change it, then we change it, so. Richard has said that, you know, he's, you know, he's a little OCD. I'm just OCD in, in, a, in a nice way, like, you know, just I just like things done, I guess, possibly when I'm at work. Uh, I, I'm known to be a little bit demanding. It's a little, like, detail-oriented. No, that's not something that somebody would normally notice. Typical of a client that used to drive me crazy. And you know what? After a while, you learn how to handle that and how to be with that, and it's totally okay. You just know you're going to get a call that day, every day, saying what's going on. You know you're going to have to give a little extra, and it's fine. Those guys are going in the front bed here. The dwarf Korean lilacs, which are supposed to go in this area here, weren't looking the greatest. And so we decided we'd put up with it, knowing that they'll bounce back and look beautiful next spring. So they want it nice and simple. So these U's are going up here, and the boxwood are going down here. <laughs> wow. Guys, I can't emphasize enough. Straight as an arrow. Richard's very particular, and if someone is that particular about stonework and things like that, you can kind of expect they're going to be even more particular about plant material. I, we trust Joe. I mean, that's <laughs> Joe's one of his favorite sayings is, trust me. And uh, yeah, you know, you always, uh, no matter what anybody says, that there's always, you have your own perspective. You always sort of say, well, I trust him, but you know, it's not always so much of trust. It's also a matter of preference. Corn beams are looking good, nice and straight. Okay. You can tell this one's still a little off. Right. Put the level on it. That's that's a lot better. The end result will be quite nice, I'm sure. I think he's happy, so he can sleep. Well, he definitely will go for a drink after this one. doing the concrete pour at the top of the stairs, cladding it with the natural flagstone. Putting the asphalt in for the driveway, sodding, and then just adding in a few extra plant materials to send it home. Looks like we're finally on a roll here. Or maybe not. This landing had gone further into the grass area, and when I saw, I saw the roughed out layout, I just thought there was not gonna be enough grass, so we cut it back, and maybe cut it back too much, because now, there's this line from the end of the landing going down along the dogwood planting area. I, I just not quite happy on this linearity. I think it'll look better if it's cut out, it's just to bring it out so that the landing is just defined quite separately from the dogwood planting area. I think Joel will agree with me, but he has to, I guess. <laughs> Great. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another phone call. I hate when he points it out without me catching it, because he's right. But anyways. Measurements and all, we're rolling to the end of another project. And this one's going to be a sizzling masterpiece. Literally. Nice, man. Nice. It's a nice uh, bit of an improvement, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The porch did way less uh, obtrusive than the other porch. But of course, you remember, the porch was so huge in those massive stairs. This is way better. Yeah, and it gave us uh, some nice room for planting beds. It's a huge, huge difference from what it used to look like. A garden doesn't have to be a ton of different plant right. species. Yeah. Here's just five to seven main plant species massed nice, out. Nice blocks. It Absolutely. makes it an architectural feeling, too. Mm-hmm. The U's are perfect. They'll get a little bit higher, and we'll keep them nice and clipped. And that'll probably go about the size of the window eventually. I think that would be nice. That'd, oh, that'd be a nice height. I love, oh, I love I like you. the change in evergreens, because you could have easily done this in uh, U's again. U and boxwood, I find to just be two of the nicest, classiest evergreens yeah. you can get. Yeah. And there's a large number of plants. It's like it's almost a mature garden already, so that certainly is, uh, makes it a little more exciting at the end. One thing that's kind of overlooked, I think, by people sometimes is the importance of urns like this. Yeah. Only because you can change them all the time. It's you true. know, the whole garden fills in and it's, it comes back the same the next year. You mean change them as in we can they put seasonal plants in. Yeah, them. yeah. Even the existing trees, again, it always goes back to that point where as soon as you do the design around these trees, they seem like they, they were meant they to be in these locations. Yeah, yeah, they belong. If you yeah. design them properly in, it's That's like, right. wow, these totally yeah. fit this space. One of the issues that the client was looking for as well was to define the space and create a bit of privacy. And uh, it wasn't uh, like we just wanted to roll in and put a fence down either side of the property. So plant material was able to achieve that quite well. I am absolutely floored and blown away by the quality of stonework, especially on the steps. I love it. The hair of this house is done in that feeling of heavy, that heaviness with stone. If you, you know, you do this chintzy and you do this like thin like this, has such a weak quality to it. If the whole driveway was done a flagstone, it would have cost a fortune. So this is just a nice touch to bring it across here and have a focal point. And, and, and it um, tones the driveway it's, down, so it's not like, oh God, yeah, like this is all driveway and we got this little entrance. Home. So now this whole thing kind of feels like entrance to the like house. Like a little courtyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Park. You use yeah. a, a high-end material with uh, something that's not as high-end, and it just it brings that material up a notch. A lot of times, I think people in our industry don't realize that their job is to complement the architecture of a house. And so that's all that's happening. It's a formal, traditional house and a formal and traditional garden. It was a pleasure. There, there was nothing negative at all about it. Uh, and we learned a lot and appreciated things, I think, a bit more. We're very pleased. Thanks, sure, guys. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Sure. Landscape design is exciting, dangerous. Trenches of World War I. Challenging. Oh. Oh. Things break. Oh. Or break down. But in the end, it's all worth it. That was a great front yard, man. Yeah, it came together really well, man. You have great conditions. You have full sun. Although. Thanks to the city, we've got this beautiful yeah. small maple in the middle of our yard. The only challenge to this site would be the existing maple. And that feeling of being the first to have a professional landscape and not have it stand out like a sore thumb. It's an old house, and I think something modern, but will complement the house, not too over the top. And we'd like some variation in level. Okay. Like, I've got two little guys. They love to climb. That's nice, actually, to yeah. hear that we're not going to go after something that's completely manicured and kids oh, can't touch Oh, absolutely not. OK. Yeah. This is sort of a medium to small yard for us, which is nice because you can really get into them and have fun. And it's got great light conditions, so that opens up the palette for plant material, so that's great. And while making Maya's garden sparkle, yeah. we've still got to deal with the everyday reality of garbage and recycling. You know, good design is problem solving, and we have to take care of this stuff. Right. And uh, you have a good five feet to handle it. That's wonderful. Joel is a lot of fun to work with. Uh, he's got a lot of great ideas. Uh, uh, we'll just see what he comes up with. Yikes, the heat is definitely on. We've got to get a good look at what we're dealing with here. 
Obviously, we'll have to address the railing. I don't know. It's fine to me. I guess the other issue is this little step yeah. here that the sidewalk is obviously settled, so. Well, we'll probably be lifting all this up, so if we do leave the steps, at least we can work with it and make it flush. We don't have that little trip factor. So it's going to have to be pretty durable if there's kids involved, because they're going to be running back and forth, kicking the balls and playing with their bicycles and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> When you measure a site, you have to be exact. Huh. Where'd my pen go? Ugh. Do you have any duct tape in your bag? Oh, no. Sexy. Sexy. That's good. Whoop. We're better than the jungle to get fresh ideas for plant material. This is a really nice opportunity for us because oh, this is wow. going to be the first one on the block that's professionally landscaped. Cool. And, and the you... thing is, is to keep it open, but make it feel like it's a personalized landscape. Okay. So there has to be a little place for the kids to hang out. It has to look classy, elegant, not too formal. Most of the design elements we do are just different geometric shapes that fit together neatly. I always find circles just makes everything kind of uniform. One really strong geometric shape I think would work better than having it too fussy. Is there a budget for the job? You know, high, low, what are we dealing with? They've been uh, really good about it in the sense that they just want to see what, what the dream garden is. And then, you know, yeah, we might have to cut back from there. Cool, so, man. Yeah. Guys, that's excellent. I think uh, we're on our way. What do you want to do now? Let's make a wish. <laughs> all right. make a wish? Okay. My wish is that we get Maya's front yard all sorted out in short order. I don't think Maya wants us to just come in and plaster a whole bunch of hedging. No. no, I agree. It's a lovely old neighborhood, but there's a little bit of a blandness going on in the front yard. I think there needs to be some element of uh, a curve in there. And she's a girl, and she's curvy, so we can do something kind of curvy. You know, either the walkway could be arced and the beds could be squared off, so there's a nice combination, or we could get something going where the, the walkway is very rigid. And So just to put a few different geometric shapes to create interest would be a, a good idea. Yeah. Hmm, more eye candy. It's nice to have a visual focal point, like you're saying, from the street and from the front door. It could be planting or something architectural or an urn. The walk we could come down and have a little bit of a zig or a zag. These yeah. licorice all sorts are coming in handy. This is, okay, this is Maya and there's Joel. Hi, they're all talking. Hello! For easy care, we'll sod the inside of the circle and ring it with a low maintenance hedging. Okay, come up with a funky little design for you that feels very natural but has a nice contemporary flavor to it as well. What's going to happen is as you're walking into the garden, you have a different experience as to when you're leaving the garden, which creates a lot of interest. And it has this nice symmetry of these two benches. These could be potentially boulders. Beautiful. To make it contemporary, this nice sort of U or boxwood hedge that will go all the way around. It'll just be a low hedge that the kids can still jump over and run around and play around still as well. I love the walkway, that it takes this whole linear walkway out of the picture. I love the crop circle he made. It's got some cool, sassy, saucy stuff going on. So yeah, it's good. We can also throw in sloppy as we get rolling with demolition. If I have to try and go, you just keep sinking in, right? Because the tires are just so bald. Maya wants some of her old plants saved for use at her cottage. So we're bagging them to go. Uh, sorry, little fella. Not you. This isn't graffiti. The paint marks out all the features and helps us avoid plumbing and gas lines. Things are looking up. At least I like to think. They're all upside down. I gotta flip them without breaking them, which is next to impossible on this yard. Ooh, don't say break. We're talking thousands of dollars of wire and stone here. We better get this worked out. Now to find the main ingredient, the focal stones for Maya's front walk. I like to use Wyerton stone. It's quarried nearby and can handle the freeze-thaw conditions of our northern climate. It also has a lot of color variations. Ultimately, this is the one run with these dark stone colors to match their walkway. We're going in the right direction. Is this the sort of look you're going for only if it was a different color, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I would be dark. after. I love these lines going through it. You really have to put some thought into the stones you're putting down, have them nice and level, have them work and fit nicely together. This is the closest by far. It's just like a foot too deep and a foot too wide. 
The good thing is, is this can work. We can always bury it, which is a bit of a waste. I don't like to do, but nothing else is going. Do yeah. you like it? Yeah, it's nice. Woo! I'm really excited. Time to kick up some dust. But there's an issue with the Wireton slabs delivered for the walkway. They're all upside down. I gotta flip them without breaking them. Really porous up here, but on the bottom, it's all nice and smooth. Let's hear what our man Dave has to say about this. That's a relief. It's time to visit the site. If I can find it. I'm thinking I'm gonna get in a little bit of trouble somehow for this. Cause it's not uncommon to uh, pay for windows being cleaned and stuff. It's a lot of dust. Uh, Dave, man, it's a uh, little dusty. Maya called me initially, she said she was interested in doing wood steps. But I think after sort of seeing this little bit this morning, she's like, hey, can we leave the existing ones? Which I have to tell you, they, they don't look too bad. Mm -hmm. Once you put the hose on it and clean it all up, it becomes really apparent that these guys just don't fit together. If it was my house, I would be taking those out. But again, ultimately, it's up to her. You know how I said this looks, oh. Oh! Maya's is looking good, but part of the design called for when you walk up, there's these two benches on either side of the walkway. So one's a focal going into the house and one's a focal coming Sounds out of cool. the house. I can't find them. These are one-offs, like these are yeah, important. Totally. Can they be different? No. no, no. Well, we talked about rocks. <laughs> Maya got her hedges pruned. Well, we're at the halfway point now. This is all being done in about two weeks, and we're, we're thrilled about that. I do have a few concerns with the design, though. There's no walkway to the side of the house anymore. I'm going to have to talk to Joel about that. Uh, <laughs> and what about those steps? I'm favoring leaving them. Originally, I just thought I would re replace them, but I, I don't find them as hideous as I found them before. Next few weeks, the plants will be in. Um, all the kids in the neighborhood will be back on the lawn, so there are some concerns. I hope they don't destroy the place. Now that the dust has settled, we're planting the plants. Hardscape's done. It's uh, screaming out for the plants. I just yep. got to figure out what to plug in. I have a couple of ideas in mind. This is this existing maple? Yeah, city tree. Not very big, which is nice. So it's not going to overwhelm right off the bat. And things can grow in and adapt with it as it grows. Thank God. It's not too big yet. <laughs> I think the focal, really, of everything is this hedging. You know what I'm thinking? Yes. Yeah. You, because it's so structural and architectural. It's evergreen, so even in the snow, this has an instant sculpture to it. Down by the sidewalk, I'm thinking butterfly bush. Imagine this butterfly bush is flowering and there's butterflies all over it. I mean, it just creates a great atmosphere for the front. Yeah, absolutely. Black Eyed Seasons might be nice for up front. I'm thinking that these should be the lunkers. Yeah. And the, these like should... trees or like big shrubs? Big shrubs. Big shrubs. Witch hazel. Are you so... actually you thinking that witch hazel here? Yeah. They're a beautiful mid-sized shrub. They have that early, early flower. And they have a really cool yellow in fall. And it's going to be instant gratification. Because it will be. Because yeah, you're not trying to bring trees in. They're waiting to get big enough. This is going to be instant when it goes in. Thanks, Nice right right picking, Thanks, Daddy. Cheers. Glad that's done. Now for the real hard part, finding those two focal rocks. If we don't, we're sunk. You're hoping to just find the perfect rock. Yeah. No, maybe, two. maybe when we go two. camping, we can throw a few in the canoe, eh? Hey? That would definitely sink us. Maya's front yard is getting some serious style, but it still has to fit into the neighborhood. Not too over the top. Those stairs are causing a bit of a clash. Should they stay or should they go? Do we change the steps? Do we not change the steps? And my rock benches are nowhere near solid. I can't find them. I hope the plants will be easier picking. We're looking for uh, witch hazels for my, in front of Maya's house. Right on. Here they are. You really get a sense of this interesting texture on the leaf. It's actually a really cool leaf. There are native species of this plant and uh, they're super tough and super hardy. What is this plant saying? It's saying, I want to go to Maya's house. <laughs> With two of my buddies. <laughs> use, 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 use. Excited. That's it for Maya's beautiful arc. When it grows in, to have it clipped high at one side, close to the house, and bring it down low in the front, or 
maybe it's a better idea to just keep them clipped equal all the way across. Maybe it determines a little bit about the plant material behind it. That's a good point, actually, Kennedy, because I have uh, a still be behind and a couple other perennials that are only about so high, so it might have to stay even. All right, enough about you. Now for the butterfly bush. These things, Kennedy, I tell you, they get up to like Huge. as high as the ceiling. Huge. I don't know why people don't use this more often. There's tons that are hardy for our environment. They uh, have a beautiful flower. It lasts actually a really good long time, as opposed to sort of the two weeks. It lasts much longer than that. Let's try a blue that and a red. Blue. And um, what about variegated? Why not? Over there. Our visit Over to left. the nursery is a success. Thankfully, Kennedy's been staying out of the bonbon jar. That's good. We've ordered lots of plant material to balance the architecture of the stone. For a small space, we've got tons of variety and interest. A little look at our plan. I feel like this is really the foundation of everything, but this beautiful arc in turn has created these really nice sort of triangular shapes around. This area is supposed to be masked out with this beautiful uh, carex grass. These are black-eyed Susans, and they look like absolutely nothing right now. They're going to fill this area out beautifully. I would say that if you're doing black-eyed Susans here, and then just carex on that side, it would be unbalanced. One would be too high, one would be too low. But what's going to offset that are the three witch hazels. Do you remember this? There's no walkway to the side of the house anymore. I'm gonna have to talk to Joel about that. Well, we talk. It's such a small front, it would only warrant one four foot wide access to the sidewalk. And in turn, we did this sort of sub access that leads you to that four foot walkway. And it, we could have ended up retrofitting the design, pulling in the hedge and making another sort of stepping stone walkway here. But she totally got what we were up to and everything worked out. She's like, ah, no problem, absolutely. We can take things across the lawn, and even in the winter time. So they put the stones down here. Here they are. These are absolutely beautiful. I actually love these stones. I love it when people get function combined with design. But when people are doing planting at their house, it's hugely important that the top of the root ball is level with the existing grade you're putting it in. Quite often we see people who put the plants in too low and it smothers it. Or they put them in too high and it gets super dry in high summer and they die because they aren't getting enough moisture. I'm just gonna lay out the uh, butterfly bush uh, water-based spray paint. Thinking right around here should work quite well. <laughs> That's good for me, I need to rest. How's it going? <laughs> Maya's is progressing really well. The hedges are in and, and we had a carex, which luckily enough came so dense in the one gallon pots, we were able to split it up and get some nice mileage for it, which is great. Perfect. But our rock benches are nowhere in sight. This should have been dead easy because it's Wyrton, which there's a plethora of. Good word. Ron's look. So you're hoping to just find the perfect rock? Yeah. No, maybe two. maybe when we go two. camping, we can throw a few That's in the canoe, top. eh? Honestly. You're looking for coursing. What they use to retain like the you know, lake. Yeah. So they have to be level because the next row can't sit. Do you know where like I can that. find it? We did a job, ask Ron, he'll know where to get it from. Check it out. Thanks to Kennedy's coursing tip and Ron's digging, the stones are about to go in. Finally. Let's hope that uh, Maya likes them. Finally, we found the rocks for Mayas. And usually the regular armor stones come more like squarish, so it's hard to find them a little more linear, which was what we were after. Honestly, I really see it a certain way in my head. It has to be nice and level, and that little bit of extra time makes a big difference. What do you think, Dave, that corner? I want the stones level and about 18 inches high. Perfect for sitting. Let's hope that uh, Maya likes them. How are you? They're beautiful. I, I hope you like them. Like They're them. gorgeous. Right now? I can't wait to tell the boys the good news. Suspend and release, okay? So I was over at Maya's this morning and uh, we placed out the large boulders. They look awesome. You mean the two stone, the big boulder things? Yeah. You, you found them? Yep, the stones have gone in. We're wrapping up the last couple plants that we had to order and uh, they're putting in the lights, so it should be ready in a couple days. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, it's an exciting little front yard. This hey, the is kids, the place. The kids are already making use of the garden. Look at that.
I love how you use these oversized slabs, man. Maya had a choice between doing boulders, core tent steel benches, or even glass box, and they went for the stone boulders. Well, it really brings it down to earth, putting a natural stone rather than a glass box. Well, it has a very relaxed feel, and yeah. that's like reflective of the climb. She's a cool, funky girl. She's not into just uh, straightforward stuff. She wants something a bit saucy. So here, we mixed up the walkway. I mean, it could have been just like whew, right to the door. That would have been boring, and not who Maya is at all. I think the highlight of the design really is the asymmetric walkway and then offset with the irregular stones. The kids love it. The first day it came in, we sat and ate pizza on the stones. What we've tried to achieve is so the site isn't just swimming in a sea of lawn, but still have it open and accessible too. Often clients are nervous about going right up the sidewalk and they put everything up against the house. But here, we wrap the garden right around and it creates a really beautiful entry court. Well, that's it. You can see the kids' toys everywhere. Like, I really expect that kids will be hanging out here. They're going to hang out with these boulders here all the time. Yeah. We've had a lot of feedback from friends, family, neighbours, and it's all been very positive. So it fits in with the, the neighbourhood. When I pull up with my car, I'm proud to actually get out of my car. Gardens really are about plant material, and that, in turn, is all about time. You gotta really be able to project yourself a few years from now. I mean, right now you're seeing individual use. Eventually you're gonna see just one beautiful park coming right across. It doesn't look like much now, but when the, all the plant material grows in, very soon you won't be seeing any soil. It's going to be a beautiful, nice, lush garden. So one of the other things that happened at this site was uh, to consider the porch. It was existing, it was in good shape, and uh, so we wanted to go with some nice dogwoods to just soften it, and as they mature, it's going to offer them a little bit of privacy. Those all went for sort of the big structure of things, but the client also had some butterfly bush here originally, so we tried to pick up on what we thought they would like, hence three butterfly bush. Right. The positive of having a Norway maple on your property is gradually prune it to keep it at bay as it, as it ages. Oh, well, there it is there. Yeah. yeah. This, this tree is right there a lot of years from now. It's going to be massive, so we tried to go with plant species that could handle it. And the storage solution was excellent, Joel. Actually, this site was really unique in that the, between the houses, they had enough room. Well, that's a great solution. You know, you've got a cedar chest. You hide all those plastic bins. There's nothing worse than those things hanging out all over the neighborhood. Yeah, and we did these beautiful stepping stones with a bank of ground cover, which will fill in nicely. I'd say that it's organic and very natural. All the features fit beautifully together, although there are some elements that really give it an element of sauciness, which, uh, which I love. Unique is another key word, and even though it's a straightforward, simple little garden, it just has all these little details that make it different. So people should not be discouraged if they have a small front yard. It's all about quality. They can always just install the walkway one year, another year do the planting plan, another year do the boulder. So just chip away at it and do it right. This is a great front yard, man. Yeah, nice right work. Up. I love this electric bolt pattern, too. It reminds me of like a lightning strike, man. Awesome. <laughs> Let's follow, Shazam follow, out of here. It, then you it leave. has a little 80s feel. Come on, Shazam. Let's go. It's the landscaping show with attitude. <laughs> you want to give me a call back when you get your ass out of bed? It's tough. This is a it tough, is tough. Site. I don't think it gets any harder than this. <laughs> it's rough. Oh, <laughs> Sometimes it's mean. You're a loser. So it's amazing we can actually make the gardens look this good. The trees are calling to us. Oh my God, it's huge. We can't resist. It's big, it's wonderful, it's, it's grand. We can't let go, but we must. If we want to see this, turn to this. I love this place rocks. Linda's place is a new build, which is a refreshingly blank slate. What I like about my backyard is the size. And speaking of size, <laughs> Oh, monstrous tree. Yeah, it's clearly been there for a long time. That's got to be 100 years old. But the tree isn't the only monstrous thing in this backyard. It's a, this. It's a big concrete <laughs> no. When the builder was doing the house, originally he was going to put a garage here. So he poured the cement pad for the garage. And we said, no, we really didn't want a garage. You know, I just felt that it just takes up way too much of the backyard. Hmm. 
getting rid of this won't be cheap. What I don't like about my backyard is the fact that it's a disaster right now because we just moved into the house in the summer and it's a new build. There's nothing back here. So as far as design goes? It's an adult entertaining, you know, having friends and family over right. for dinner. And no specific style. I like a more relaxed style. All right, this is going to be uh, very, very cool. We'll turn it into something that's pretty spectacular. Kenny just seems great. He seemed to ask the right questions. He seemed to understand what it was we were looking for. I love Linda. She's letting us do whatever we want. We don't have a cottage. We don't go out of the city. So it's really nice to have a calm, quiet place to, to escape to, even though we're still in the city. Carte blanche are two of my favorite words. I've got to get this place measured up immediately. Wow, another brand new house. It's the one on the right, not the one on the left. <laughs> I knew that. This is a uh, right away, by the way. <laughs> That's There's a cat on the window. What is this string? That's a. Uh, oh, the thing. I don't know, but you tripped on it. Wow, look at that tree. Isn't that spectacular? You think we could wrap our hands around it? That's like five foot oh diameter. Oh my god, it's huge. The canopy's so high here that the light right. still comes underneath. It'd be great if we could remove this. This really dominates the back garden. That's the challenge. All right, let's get measuring. And that's three feet. Yeah. Next up, a meeting of the minds. James Joel, there's a picture of Linda's house there. Right. Oh, there's a lot of fencing on both sides. Can yeah. we ban this from ever happening? It's Why, the that's, worst. I think that's we cannot a... legally ban it. Can't well, stand it's, it's it. It's northern vernacular, man. It's got to go, man. <laughs> but getting to well, their style. I think their interior is just a traditional, but updated uh, traditional kind hmm. of look to it. Clean like materials. I like, you know, it's smooth granite. All I can imagine in this backyard is just the materials being really upscaled a little bit more than just rich feeling. I mean, flagstone is, and then you go to saw cut flagstone. Well, look at this one. It gets wet. The green comes out beautifully. It does. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds it's me of a uh, beer soaked floor dried out. The standing is just gorgeous. They want a water feature, which is okay. cool. I love that. Yeah. You tell them they shouldn't do it because you need a biology class to maintain them. And they cost a fortune you know because what? you got to do it right. You don't want them to see the pond liner. You want them to see a nice natural stone at the bottom. It would still cost a fortune to put natural stone at the bottom of the water feature. But aside from that, they can be beautiful. I do like them sometimes. <laughs> so I guess we can move on to the next stage, putting pen to paper. I'm leaving too. Good uh, luck, dude. Coffee. Well, that was helpful. Maybe it's time for a one-on-one -on -one with Lorne. Garage, this garage isn't going to work because we talked about getting the car in here. That's the end of the right of way shared by these two houses. So I if see. you want to take a car into the back, you have to pull it all the way into the back past that auto barn. So that's going to eat up some of the space. That's right. going to be a little bit of a challenge. Right. You know what? we got to screen this car off. And almost everybody puts their entertainment area right up against the back of their home. I mean, it works because it's so close to the kitchen, but it's important uh, during our nice weather to get back into the garden. It really makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. If you can incorporate a like, bench. You don't mean a little. Victorian bench, you mean a bench. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? It makes sense to put something in this garden that's really oversized, over scale almost, yeah. because of the size of that tree. I'm thinking maybe a big slab of wood with strapping of stainless steel for the legs. The other thing she requested was uh, a shed. It's always <laughs> goofy to me that it's stuck in the corner. Well, Can't it's also stand. nice if we can do a storage area that rather than have it look like a shed, that looks like something that's architectural. It's just, it's always a tough sell just because the cost of them usually. But that might be an idea, just getting one of those kits and then just jazzing it up rather than just starting just, from scratch. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm going to leave this up to you and okay. uh, so you can have okay. fun. I hate to waste the concrete port for the garage pad, but for this design to work, it's got to go. Here we go, Linda. This is how we're going to get a little bit of interest as far as grade changes go. Because your door is four feet off the ground, we're going to walk you down slowly into the backyard. This is going to be the first level of entertainment. Okay. It's 24 inches off the ground, so these two spaces feel like they're actually separated from okay. each other. In the middle here, we're doing six medium-sized trees. Okay. And it's kind of to fill this void in between the big tree and human scale. But to also divide the space up and have this feeling that you walk through like a miniature forest. Underneath this forest setting, we just want to do a water feature. It's just the feature itself. I'm not sure yet what it's going to be. Okay. The tree in the back corner, because it's such a spectacular canopy, we're locating the main patio underneath it the main focus where you're going to dine. And then you got the shed at the end of it, so it kind of feels like it's part of this area. I don't see any major changes. I think it looks fabulous. Yeah. It looks awesome. Thanks okay. so much, Thanks Kennedy. A lot. We're looking you're forward welcome. to it. Taking up this slab means a lot of noise and a big chunk of the budget. Question, how many men does it take to plug in a second jackhammer? So what's going on? We need you to knock on uh, the neighbor over there to see if we can get into the power. From inside the house, we can do that. Plug into their power? Don't want to go over there, right? Eh? <laughs> Don't make me do it. 
And that's not the only issue we're dealing with. So as you can see, we're hitting tons of roots. They're huge too, man. This is the roots we're gonna run into everywhere, then for sure well, don't do it. Until we try a few spots, we're not gonna know what we're into, right? We have pretty good indication we're screwed. I mean, you think we would know better, but you, know, you just wanna do a certain style of the yard, and then, you know, you know, the guys will take care of that when you get there, and then they tell you, yeah, we can't do this. Because we don't wanna damage the tree, that's why. Getting this place ready for our design is really messy. It's so bad, we've had to call in reinforcements. What a headache. We're trying to clean up all the concrete and salvage all the rebar. It was only poured six months ago and it's still good and recycle it. With the old pad gone, it's time to prepare for the new one. And when you have a tree this large, you have to take great care to preserve the root system. These piers will support the weight of the concrete pad a few inches above the ground, so it won't put pressure on the roots. Luckily, we're able to recycle the gravel from under the original pad. And there was like 18 inches of gravel underneath us, so we were able to reuse it instead of dumping it and getting more. The gravel will allow for drainage under the patio area. This way, the root system still gets water, and it won't impede the growth of the tree. The roots will make it really difficult if you want to dig holes. We're using post hole diggers instead of augers to reduce the risk of damaging the roots. It's tougher, slower, and presenting unexpected challenges. It cracked off, hit something this morning when it was really cold, so broke it right off. Makes it hard to dig with half of a post hole digger. How's it going at Linda's house, Kennedy? I think we're uh, good with the tree roots. I mean, the whole process was done, so we didn't damage too many roots, just a couple right. piers. So right. it's like right. one foot and eight of them. Yeah. That's how much dirt actually got taken out. So you think, how much damage can that do to I'm sure you cut it cleanly after you, uh, you guys did it, because when you damage a root, it's just like if you damage a limb up top, you want to cut it clean so no disease enters it. Yeah. Yeah. So it heals better? Yeah. It's time to start laying some concrete of our own. Today, we're just pouring the pad for the place on that we'll be laying. Quite a bit of concrete, full load, all by wheelbarrows, trying to get in before the cold weather starts. This tree is thankful for this carefully made pad. Now, for that fantastic saw cut flagstone. The flagstone they're doing here is absolutely spectacular. This is primo perfect stone masonry. This is perfect random square cut right here. And the lines are all identical, like the width of the grout lines are, <laughs> it's perfect. Now that the flagstone patio is done, next on our hit list is a storage shed, something lacking in many yards. We found this one online and customized the design. It comes pre-built. All we have to do is snap it together on site. We also had a bit of luck getting it installed just before the first snowfall. The only thing to go on now is the doors. And uh, this is a single door on this side for the garbage area. And then there's a dividing wall in the middle. And then this is a double door that we're going to put on so access. Primarily bikes are the ones that they're annoying when trying to get out. So this is a double door that'll swing out to get all the bikes in. New flagstone patio? Check. Stunning and useful storage shed? Check. Now we've got to get started on the deck and slided privacy screening. And I couldn't be happier. Uh, the tarpet allows us to uh, get the project done over the winter time so that at least in the spring, the, um, uh, the project can continue. Who'd have thought you could build a deck in the winter? Genius. The cedar's all clear, that's what the designers wanted. Very few knots, it's very clean look. Because of that, and the cost involved with it, they've also asked us to not see any fasteners on the deck at all, so that means we're screwing from underneath, and uh, then it will all be nice and clean. It's fabulous. It looks almost like furniture. The fact that they could build the deck without any nails showing is just remarkable to me. I don't know much about carpentry, but it looks amazing. And the, uh, the screening is fabulous. I love the contrast between the dark wood and the lighter wood. Um, it looks incredible. Talking about great wood, what about that oversized bench I've pegged for this space? I need a big pumpkin piece of wood. I don't care what type of tree it is, just whatever's gonna work well. And I'm thinking a little bit lighter wood, just so it doesn't kind of contrast so close to the cedar. So yeah. we're gonna go with ash. Nice. Nice and solid. They use for furniture building, right? Yeah, yeah, ash and poplar. The Let scale of it alone is gonna be beautiful. 
12 foot. 12 foot, 14 inch by 14 inch wide. It makes sense to put something in this garden that's really oversized, over scale almost, yeah. because of the size of that tree. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait to put this yeah. in. You know, can we see this kick? Let's cut it. All right. I'm sc I'm gonna go hide, man. This James is afraid of the saw. What about Joel? Joel wants to ride it. Yeah. See if he can just fearless or deathless. Yeah. Joel, your butt's on the line. So we've dealt with the roots of the huge maple and building the deck. Now it needs a haircut. Thomas is coming in to prune this gargantuan maple. We're gonna try to raise the lower canopy by probably about 20 feet. If we can get a little bit more light, the tree is in great shape. Very, very impressive, actually. You don't see that this size of trees often in the city. You know what, when you prune a tree that big in the winter, I feel like, did they prune it? I mean, I can't even tell they did anything. Really? But it's huge. You know what, it's the right time to prune a tree. You know why? Because the branches are, the leaves are off. You can't see the impact right away. You know, the neighbors don't get freaked out. It's, I, I like that. I was talking to Thomas before they were pruning the tree, and I said, if you can do anything, give them more sunlight in their yard. That's you brought the light into their lives, Kennedy. I did. I may have brought in the light, but not water. I still have no idea what to do with the water feature, and time is running out. Spring has finally sprung, and the one thing still missing is that water feature I'm after. This is it. This is Linda's water feature. Well, Joe and I were at this job site yesterday oh, measuring, yeah. and we saw this I beam with a hole in it. I don't know if that's too rough. What about like a steel plate with that's been like finished, so, like so rough. it's nice. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. So it's a little bit. Oh, of this. Whoa. Oh, oh, you know what? I really gotta uh, gotta work on my tan. Man. It's been a long winter. What do you think about this water feature? Okay, maybe we'll put off the water feature for now and work on Linda's planting plan. Like the whole backyard's canopy by this maple, but the canopy of it is so high. Yeah. So the sun actually streams under the canopy. It doesn't really create a lot of shade. That's so nice, man. Eight out of 10 gardens are shade I here, know. and uh, you get one that and has you... a bit of sunlight. It's like, all right, I can use a whole bunch more plants. The whole concept was have this upper sitting area, but have this medium-sized tree forest grove in yeah. between. Everything else is gonna follow in the path of whatever these six are gonna be. Service bearing. Actually, I was thinking of Chanticleer pears. Perfect size, nice flower, all season interest. Well, you know, there's one that we always use that uh, we get a little tired of because we always use But How do you feel about carrots? It can handle shade. All I know is around the water feature, I need coral bells, that bright yellow color. Looks really cool in the winter time. Cool, I think that's good. Right now? That's for the water feature. The sheer size of the other stuff going into this yard has given me an idea. I, I was thinking that with a garden hose. <laughs> All right. No. There's a glimmer in this rock's eye. Because <laughs> 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 uh, I just saw the top, because it has sort of a flat top. And hey, by Quinky Dinky, it has a, a yeah, bottom, bottom that's flat. So it might be easier to balance in there. But is it high enough? Two and a half would be above the deck. It's too short. Like, this is two feet only. The weight of this, Lauren, is probably, what, 800 pounds? That one's probably closer to 1,000. This is, uh... Too big. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. It's Let's something say. out of the Flintstones. There's no way you're using it. But the height of that is what we're looking for. Oh, OK, height, yeah. Smaller than Texas would be nice. Oh, he's taking the easy Jay's, route out. Jay's like, screw Stay. them. Actually, this one is kind of cool. Oh, that's that that freaking awesome. Oh, this is it. Let's see that sign? This is it. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is, for one stone, that is what you're looking for, man. No, I love it. It's got a really beautiful texture, color. It's got interest. I'm just putting water on it so I can see the color of this right. thing. Right. Look at that. That is so hot. And it's going to look even hotter alongside some plants and trees. The day the plants arrive is always really exciting for the client because they see the quickest transformation of anything else we do. But it never fails. There's always something the client wants to change on site. About this storage unit and the tree that's going here. I, I gotta look at the plan, but isn't the tree like there or something? The tree was like right here. It's amazing. Whenever you give people this much storage, you always need a little bit more storage. It's unbelievable. If it was two feet wider, we still need another storage. So, but they have to get to it, right? Because that was anticipated they were gonna put storage back there. So we just gotta move the tree out so they can actually get by and use this thing. Not only does this look cool, it is. 
It's easier and faster than shovels, gives a more even depth and creates a nice smooth finish on top. When you put soil in, everybody, not even the plants yet, just soil, people start going, oh, finally it's all coming together. Plants go in, in no time, and then it's like, we're off to the races, have fun. The water feature, that's it. The water feature and a visit from our designer, Lisa. This is adult entertaining kind of feeling to the backyard. Okay. But this is the barbecue section back there. Okay. And then this was just this loungy and feeling. So I had drawn like a couple chaise lounges here. Okay, and the dining area? Dining back there. And that, a big reason for that was because of the tree. Well, I love what you did with these yellow plants. I yeah. don't know what they are, but they're beautiful. Yeah. Coral bells. So if I can get some kind of color in the furnishings or the planters that play off of that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Almost there, except for the water feature. But with a little help, we'll be done. <laughs> As for the water feature, first we bored a hole through the rock. Then we laid flat stones underneath for the base. Now, we just need to lift it into place. <laughs> Easier said than done. Once we lift it into place and line it up, we run a pipe through the hole and attach the pump that sits out of sight. Oh, that's the sound I've been waiting for. All we need now is to dress up the space and we're ready. Square actually specifically because the shape of the deck, the sheen of the glass kind of mimics the water behind us and the grid pattern adds a certain lightness, it adds texture. This is great because I wanted to get something that didn't have a back on it. It doesn't obstruct your vision. So whether you're in the dining area, you can see through to Kennedy's beautiful bench here. So it's a really nice showcase and it's a great color. Wow. wow, I love Man. that bench this already. quite different. I love this. Nice line. Nice rock. It's terrific. We really absolutely love it. Right away, you get the client out and then immediately up gangplank right to the backyard where they can sit and hang out in the back. But I see yeah. three things right away that I love. I, I love that fence, the detail on the two-tone wood. And I, I love that bench with the metal. And I love this stone. Yeah, this is yeah. a beautiful stone. It's an aerosand stone, and it's just like the normal Wyrton stone we use, but it's soft cut on all sides. Looks sharp. Five months ago, our backyard was a complete disaster. And now it's like paradise. It's exactly what we'd hoped for. The great thing about that barrier that was designed there is the slats in it will allow wind to come through rather than just being a solid barrier. The adjectives I'd use to describe this would be elegant and bold. Everything about it has got very strong character. The water features a strong character, the existing tree, the bench, and all the materials are really, really striking. I wanted Linda to have input in this water feature. Yeah. The design consideration was everything is so square that she wanted this kind of more of a natural kind of shape it's in the middle. Contrast. We've noticed with the water feature that we're getting more birds now. There's a robin there now. We've had uh, finches come down, and I've never seen yellow finches in our backyard before. So it'll be interesting to see what other birds visit us over the summer. When you come outside into a space that's been designed well, it's hard to go back in. It's like it's, it's amazing to sit outside. And, and it's so much more relaxing outside than it is inside. It's such a perfect extension of our family room. It's like added a whole other room to our house for the summer. It's party time. I think I could suggest a poor man's tequila. Okay, let's do this. Who can make a, who can bite it without I'm making a bite. face? Buddy. Uh, Ready? One, uh, two, these are organic. three. Go. Oh, oh, you can bite it. it. I can't even get my teeth into it. Bite it. Oh, oh do you know reminds me of? Are these plastic? Puerto Vallarta. I'm yeah, out of here. I gotta go. go. Bye, guys. The appeal of a lawn bowling green in the morning is irresistible. I'm Joel. This is Kennedy, James, and Lauren. And Dirty Business likes a little low stress, highly starched competition now and again. It's a kinder, gentler way to get grass stains. Now I'm going to turn you all into great bowlers. It's not actually round, it's a little bit egg shaped. It will always roll in toward the jack. What's a jack? That's a jack. Oh, that's a jack. To be a, a lawn bowler, you should be a team player. I'm about 15. to take both of them out. Oh, that's way too oh hard. God. I'd like to introduce you to I'm, James Free Money yeah. Dale. <laughs> Remember the word smooth. Smooth. We're hopeless. People may not think it's very demanding, but it can be. Oh, my gosh. No. It's harder than it looks. 
Well, part of it at least. Yes, Fred. This place reminds me of our next client's front yard. It may be as flat as this, but holds none of the charm. It's not a big project, but it's a great end of the season project so we can wrap things up. I mean, we might get stung and we might have a week of work that we have to finish next spring. So why even bother starting just weeks before the first snowfall? We'll let Jennifer tell it. It's kind of like a parking lot or an airport landing strip. We did a massive renovation and it's a holdover from what was here before. We've been desperate to make it look a lot better. The client's taking this project on now, I think because they've aced it inside, the interior is beautiful, and now it's time for the landscape. We were kind of looking to ride the knife edge between modern and traditional, if that's possible. They're also looking for a defined walkway so it has some character. They're looking still to accommodate parking for a car and a half and soften it with plant material. We're hoping to get the yard done before the snow falls because we want to start the spring fresh. The only problem is, is the client won't be able to appreciate their plant material because it's going in end of the year. We've been looking forward to this for a long time and we're super happy to finally have it going. And who better to get it rolling than Lauren, our chief designer. The things that are the most important, of course, even though it seems like a minor thing, are locating the sidewalk so I know the distances from the house to the sidewalk for square footages of material that we require and the type of plant material we can put in. Right now it's all parking. We want to soften up the entrance to their house, give them a little bit more curb appeal, but still allow for a couple cars to park there, but have a nice entry. So we have a great picture of Jennifer's house. It's at the moment of a nuclear explosion. <laughs> well, wonderful. Printer's doing a great job. Uh, basically, it's it's all lockstone. It's room for three cars room now, for right? three cars. Right. And they're saying they're willing to go down to one and a half. Oh, what, how do they drive the half car? It's just uh, this half. It's cut <laughs> right in half, and they balance it. The only thing that's going to do anything for this front is some vertical element. Even the, the pattern of the paving in the parking space is going to be important because that's going to add architectural element to it. And it is a heritage area, so it's a beautiful Victorian neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. One thing everybody should know is that they want a defined walkway. Well, wait a sec. There's quite a bit of room here. It's quite a wide lot, so I think there's lots of opportunity here to have a, a garden as well. Yeah. In a walkway. Just don't let the car pull up in front of the stairs. I hate when driveways, your car is pulled up and the stairs are in front yeah, of your car. Yeah, I don't like that. That's a great oh, point. It drives me crazy. This is a long walkway and this is their kitchen table and it's open all the way to the back. So the, when they're walking down the hallway, the view right out the front door and it's got a glass front door, it goes right to the sidewalk basically mm -hmm. in the street. So it'd be nice to have some sort of vista. So the cars can still park here. Yep. It was some room to plant in here, which is great. And then definitely to get something going along across the front here. Yeah. Right, but you know, know what? I gotta give these no. guys 100% credit for taking away some of this hardscape. Good job. Yeah. 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 We love it. Will Jennifer? Hi, Jen. How are you? Hi, Joel. Nice to see you. Good to see you. A bit of a rainy day. Yes. How are perfect things? Perfect day. It's always great when you can come into people's homes and see their exterior and see how the flow is. Mm -hmm. There's this beautiful axis and flow with the house and so we're trying to pick up on that and sort of stop your eye from just going right to park cars and asphalt and put in some plant material. Okay, that's great. And then we wanted to clad this existing timber wall. Yes. I just wanted to actually make sure that that's okay with yes. the neighbors. Yeah, we, we, still we to talked talk to our neighbor them. and uh, he was delighted and he said maybe you could do it on his other side too. Well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and I guess the only thing I'm not completely clear on is how we're managing the elevation here. The intention is to take this dilapidated wall out and rebuild it. I'm really excited to take out this weed tree yeah. because there's a beautiful crab apple in there. Yeah, there's and actually two different types of crab apple in there, yeah. oddly enough. It really is beautiful, so we like to keep it. Absolutely. Along with the weed tree, we're shedding the tired interlock pavers. They're off to be recycled. And that tree is history. So is the pressure-treated retaining wall. It might be late in the year, but it might as well be spring. So how's it looking? Uh, it's looking good. We got everything, all the shrubberies out, and uh, we're gonna start putting in some timbers for the retaining wall. 
It's amazing how that even makes a big difference, eh? This line here, realizing how, how much room they actually use for their car, yeah. might come down a little bit. If we can give them more planting, as opposed to hardscape, that'd be great. For being little more than a parking pad, this place is jammed with stuff. Now that's a clean slate. It's not even 8.30. These guys don't get it out of bed till 10. I'm afraid I can't take your call right now, so please leave a message. Thank you very much. Hey, Joel, it's Kevin here. Just got a little situation. Want to give me a call back when you get your ass out of bed? Talk to you later. Loves that voice. Loves it. I don't know why. It's creepy. We're making it way better by reducing the size of the parking and increasing the size of the plantings. <laughs> Get this guy a talent ah, agent, quick. I broke it. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's nice and level. Excellent. New pressure treated wood for the timber walls is going in. And we're cladding it in cedar for a combo of strength and beauty. Once that's done, the guys prepare the parking pad surface for some new pavers. And because of that, we've got to land on just the right kind. What do you got for me today? Uh, well, boss, I... Uh, what do you got for me today? Blah, blah. Let me get over here. <laughs> it's coming down to Belden Paver. Yeah, one of my favorites. Natural flagstone, banding. My second favorite. Yep, well, That's just as a banding, it would be a little yeah. too much to do the whole driveway out of this, or asphalt. The asphalt, I think, is a great for a big driveway filler and then maybe doing some banding, but when you're dealing with a little downtown property, it might overwhelm. Yeah, it might, it might. The client has, you know, is interested in doing something that would be a bit more environmentally friendly. Yeah. You know, the Belden paver being a little more porous between the cracks and everything yeah. might be a better option. I mean, it's a clay, real clay paver with some uh, some stone aggregates added to it so frost doesn't damage it. So it's really designed to go in the ground. I think that makes for a really nice color combo. And uh, the client does want a defined walkway. So it might be that this is what we use for the driveway and this would be a nice thing to use for the walkway. But you know what, uh, what do you think for a pattern? Uh, I'm a huge believer in the good old herringbone 45 angle to the house. Yeah, that creates a bit more yep. interest when you're doing it. That is the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah. sounds great. Cool. All right, okay, man. I'm gonna bounce that yeah. off Jen and yeah. we'll go from cool. there. Thanks. That was the thing that we agonized over most. We wanted to be environmentally friendly. Uh, we wanted it to fit in. We wanted it to be practical. And so we landed with the, the brick that we think is the perfect choice. It works really well with the house. and and we just like the fact that it's a bit different from what you usually see. As winter creeps closer and closer, the flags don't arrive. And to the client, they look a lot bigger in person than on paper. She's having second thoughts about the size of the driveway. Oh yeah! Hey Joel, Kevin here. Yikes, I guess I should check my messages more often. You get your ass out of bed? Turns out that one and a half parking spots are a bit impractical. So we're eating into the service berries to buy the rest of a second space. So she wants those two feet. I think we'll take it from the planter bed. I'm gonna try and make it more like 18 inches. Okay. Talk to you later, Joel. <laughs> See ya. I hate it when he does that. So while the flagstones go in, we're finalizing the planting plan. Parking lots can be beautiful. Yes. It's just choosing the right plant material that's gonna go in there. It could be a nice sort of Acer Janela, like a flame maple, but in a standard form, or, you know, service berry, or something along those lines. I think something that doesn't get massive. Right. When cars are parking, when people are walking, it's not going to poke them in the eye, so it has to have something that's high and bushy, so. Yeah. Yeah, and it uh, has a bit of a formal feel, so I, I think it might be nice to look at, like, some nice clipped U on the back planting bed, and on the front planting bed, some nice clipped boxwood, so Ooh. it has a nice tea so you're a genius. Did you know up. that? And then maybe some grasses or something to loosen it up. In the center? Yeah. Yes. And I guess the other challenge will be to have some foundation planting. That's often the toughest plant yeah. to choose, I find. You know what would be good to add in here is lavender and beach. She likes lavender. Does she? Actually. Yep. Did lavender, we mention echinacea? Echinacea, I think we should try and go after the white. Everybody uses the purple. I really right. like the white echinacea. Yes, so it's kind of creamy. Isn't it kind of creamy? Beautiful. But, and actually, the beach could even uh, continue a little bit on the other side just to balance it out oh, I see. as well. On this side, let's just try to screen that off, I think. Yeah, I'd like to work with the um, existing crab apple. Maybe we could plunk in a couple more. That might be a good idea. We'll go with that. All right, can we go to the nursery now? Let's go take a look again. Okay. Who are we kidding? Nursery? Not a good idea with this kind of weather. In fact, it's even stopped the project in its tracks.
Luckily, the snow didn't hang around, so we can get the pavers down in our focal herringbone pattern. Even if Jennifer wanted to go, there's not much to see at a nursery this time of year. She's going to have to go on pictures. And so I was thinking that we could go with an amelanchier, which is a type of service berry. Okay. Beautiful white flower, wonderful berry in the summer. What color are berries in the summer? A red berry, and the great thing is they're not messy. But the other possibility might be a magnolia. And they're a little temperamental. The magnolias are hard to keep up? Yeah. Okay. We're going to have both delivered. All right. And we'll take a look and see which ones are the best. Okay. So we have an evergreen magnolia, which is a little bit out of the zone here. But it's zonal denial. It's zonal denial. Zonal We're denial. in a hefty case of zonal denial. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> or the amelanchiers. And I love the, mag the magnolias for being evergreen and having winter interest. Yeah. I just can't handle when things look out of context. I'm leaning towards the amelanchiers. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you with the, the amelanchiers. The fall color, I love it. Yeah, I, I love it too, and I think that, uh, I feel, looking at those uh, magnolias, I feel like I may be in England, or I might be in the Carolinas or something. Yeah. All right, and they don't look like a lot right now, Yeah. but uh, they're going to look great for three other seasons of the year. And actually, you know what? Once they're uplit and they have everything else going around the bottom of them, I think they'll look really dynamite. There's only one problem. Hello, Peter. Hello. Hi, Peter, this is uh, Mrs. Jones. How are you? Yeah, you're good, yourself. Uh, very good. I was just wondering about this order. It's not all here. Uh, how do you mean it's not all there? Where are the rest of the plants? Which west of what? You, boxwood, beech, lavender, echinacea, grasses, some carrots. Can you have it here tomorrow? I can see what I can do. It might not be first thing, but it'll be there. Okay, I will, uh, I will work on it, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. We've been watching it sort of come together through snow and rain and mud. Until yesterday, it was hard to see what it was going to look like with plants, but I think now it's really starting to take shape. The plants have arrived. It's a chilly day, and uh, the perennials are looking a little smaller than I would have liked. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. They're going to be probably two or three feet high by midsummer next year. It's just, it doesn't always look great to clients. But uh, I'm really happy with the crab apples. They look beautiful. These are ornamental crab apples. These berries stay on all winter. It stays nice and small, and it's not messy. And to me, this is great winter interest. My favorite plants, I think, are the service berries. I really love the shape of them, and I love how they look from, from inside. I think those are my favorite right now. These are beech, which is one of our favorites around the office. It's great for hedging, but we've brought them in small here, so we're going to have a nice sort of hedging wall across the front of the house. And actually, one of the things I'm really excited about with this planting plan is because the outside of the bed is square, we're going to do an oval shape on the inside, and then it's going to have free-flowing uh, ornamental grasses coming from within the boxwood and within the U. Hey, you remember way back when? So it's not a big project, but it's a great end of the season project so we can wrap things up. I mean, we might get stung and we might have a week of work that we have to finish next spring. Well, we got stung. At least we've got something beautiful to look forward to come spring. Now with spring here, we've got to spruce it all up before we can show it off. Claire, hey, how honey. are you? Okay. Yeah, good to see you. It looks great. Yeah. What are you up to? Even a low maintenance garden requires a little bit of something, right? That's it. All our clients ask for no maintenance. Now I say, can't do no maintenance, but we can keep it low maintenance. Mm, so, that's true. Yeah. One of the great things, a cultivator. Yep. If you did it like every week, lightly cultivate it, it keeps the weeds like way down because you're killing them when they're a few centimeters high. Well, yeah, the roots get can't get yeah. established, I guess. So yeah, that's makes... right. You're, you're getting them when they're seedlings. Yeah. Right? And then you know, throwing you know really good top quality soil on top in the spring it really darkens up the soil. Really, really gives it great nutrition. It's like this service berry, right? It's a great tree. You want to look at sort of four things: dead, diseased, damaged, and interfering. Well, there's really no dead on it. There's no diseased. It might be a broken, you know, twig or something in here, and sure. then interfering. You want to take stuff that's crossing back. Right. That's just not pleasing to the eye, and ultimately, it's not very healthy for the plant. Right. So we take out. 
things that are kind of going off in the wrong direction at an early age. Gotcha. So that we have a mature plant that has a really great shape. Well, it's looking great. I'll, uh, I'll let you go with it, and okay. uh, I'm on my way. Ciao, babe. Mwah. Beautiful herring this bone. Yeah. Love it. This was a tough site, man. This is a site that you probably wouldn't get totally like, wow, thrilled, enamored about because it's parking cars. And then get as creative as possible to still include definition to a walkway and make it feel lush and green and beautiful with plant material. One hell of a nice parking bag. We are just so happy that it's done because it was just such a nightmare before. I love using the description of train wreck for uh, how it was, and uh, I think it's been wonderfully cleaned up. It just seems like it was meant to be. It just relates so well to the house, the colors and the, the textures. This driveway doesn't look harsh. It's kind of warm, actually. Yeah, you're like, I don't mind looking at this. It makes the house, it actually warm. shows it off well. It's, it's kind of cool. Warm color. We went with the Belden paper, which we've used in the past, but it's beautiful. It feels restful somehow to me because it's linear without being overly formal. A so nice, uh, the transition between where the pedestrian walkway is and where the car will park. I think that idea that it's it's not just a straightforward walkway uh, as it, when you step out, so there's some interest. It has a slight jog in it. Plant material breaks it up a little bit. A great design tip for anybody working on their own home is consider every different angle. There's 360 degrees that have to be considered. And here, I realized on leaving their house, their focal out their door from the inside of their house is hugely important. So hence, two beautiful standard service berries went in to soften your eye and stop your eye on something beautiful. In the springtime, they flowered and, and you can see them from inside the house when, when we're eating. So that's really nice. We tried to work with the uh, existing crab apple and put in three more, so that should really yeah. help soften it and make it for a beautiful flower in the springtime. So with the planting plant, all plants have an important role. What we like to do is to work with the larger plants and work your way down. So from trees to shrubs to perennials. And then it becomes detailed right down to each perennial. It is a young garden. You know, what will this this will look like in a couple of years will be dramatically different. So, you know, just remember yeah, so that. When this fills in, it'll really yeah, be absolutely. extraordinary. It's not our job to overwhelm the house with plant material or make it too scarce with plant material. It's just trying to hit that right balance so that it complements the house.